2022 is here. Can you believe it? Like we, we made it through 2021, everyone. We actually fucking made it. Hey you guys, real quick before we get started, it seems that I was having some audio issues that I did not notice until editing this video. My mic was making some kind of weird low background noise. You may notice it here and there, you may not, but I just wanted to point it out that I do know about it because I figured I'd get a lot of comments. I can't go and redo all of these because of that, so please just excuse it if you do notice it. So 2022 is here, my fellow weird ones out there, and it's gonna get very, very weird. <laughs> there are definitely some glimmers of hope though in 2022, I would say more so than in 2021. But there are also a lot of shakeups still happening in 2022. I've said this before and I'll say this again, there really is no going back to normal. There may be the illusion of going back to normal in 2022 for a little bit on and off, but it will set in that as we have learned so much over these last couple years, as so many people have awakened to a new way of seeing the world, a new perspective, and learning things that have been covered up for a long time in general. I don't think that there's any way that we can just ignore them, although I think a lot of people will try in 2022. And I'm going to do a whole separate video on what's coming in my predictions for 2022 in general, but for this video, we are going to go over the horoscopes for each sign for a more personalized reading as to what's coming in 2022 for your zodiac sign. As always, rising sign will resonate most because horoscopes are written for your rising sign because your rising sign is your first house, therefore every other house is your correct house when listening to the actual astrological horoscope for your rising sign. And if you're new here, my name is Tani Michelle. I am a tarot reader and a practicing astrologer. And I'm also just another weird spiritual person on the internet. So hello, I am not all love, light, twin flames, glitter, and unicorns. So I do talk about both the dark and the light. Make sure to check out my other videos, subscribe, comment down below, and let me know what you think of your 2022 horoscope because these are a lot of work and make sure to share this with your friends and family because uh, it would help me out here over on my little small channel. I hope you guys had good holidays if you are watching this still during the holidays of 2021. With that all being said, the timestamps will be listed down below for your sign. Let's go ahead and get into the sign horoscopes for 2022, boo. <laughs> Alrighty, starting with you, Aries. Wow, so 2022 is definitely changing shit up when it comes to certain areas of life that you will see come up in your life a little bit more, certain topics, certain themes. It has a different flavor to it than 2021, although there will still be certain continuations or certain topics that have been brought up in 2021 reoccurring in 2022 as well, but there will also be kind of like some other flavors added to the mix, some other things added to the mix to spice things up a little bit. And I think the tension, the general sense of tension that you may have been feeling on and off throughout 2021, especially in terms of your social life, where you fit in in the world, friends and your aspirations and goals in your life, what you want to achieve in life and general frustration with value and worth and money and finance that you've been kind of dealing with this push and pull of throughout 2021, that will not be as intense for the most part, but there will still be some themes of that coming up as Saturn will still be in your 11th house of Aquarius of friends and social issues, social goals, social aspirations. Uh, friend groups, like-minded people, uh, humanitarian projects and social circles that you hang around and just general ambitions. There may still be some restriction there and it can get very easy to get caught up in a fixed way of thinking with others that think the same way and not really venture out into your own way of thinking. And I think that was really a large, large part of 2021 for you, really kind of redefining your belief systems and taking a look at your ideas and perspectives when it comes to the bigger picture, but also when it comes to just your general environment and surroundings. Jupiter is going to be moving into your 12th house and then into your sign, but it will be moving into your 12th house really the first five months of 2022. And so there will be a large theme uh, coming up to do with healing, 
to do with getting away, refreshment, just really wanting to do your own thing, maybe wanting to be more secluded or find time to go on a vacation, go on a retreat, just get away and do something that feels cleansing, refreshing, uh, or even do something that feels nostalgic or that really brings back memories for you and that really helps you reflect on the past. Like you're gonna be feeling very reflective on and off throughout 2022. You're gonna be really thinking about the past and healing and how you can let things go, how you can forgive. Now, what I will say Aries, especially if you're an Aries rising, which like I said, these are more for your rising sign, but there may be a general sense of escapism though with Jupiter and Pisces in your 12th house for those first five months and then also the last two months of 2022, there will, you'll be revisiting whatever comes up the first five months. So do keep that in mind, but there may be a general theme of escapism, avoidance or procrastinating or putting things off, ignoring things or acting like they don't exist, which may come back around to bite you. So you do want to address any time you see those kinds of behaviors coming up for you. It can be very easy for you to just wanna avoid things, just wanna run away or just escape by uh, unhealthy means. So you do really wanna be careful with that, whether it's drugs, alcohol, you know, anything that may be unhealthy. This can be a good year though for finding a healthy escape as long as you're not using it to an extreme to escape your actual reality. That's when it could get kind of unhealthy. That's when you could wind up way too in a different reality and just too detached from what's actually going on. So you do really, really want to be careful with that with the Jupiter transit through Pisces, but it can be a really good time to kind of keep to yourself or work on things that are artistic or creative or healing endeavors, different ways of healing, surrender as well, or possibly feeling more compassionate for those that feel lost or lost souls or you even exploring uh, your own sense of feeling lost in the world as well for some Aries risings. So then from May 2022 to October 2022, Jupiter will move into your sign Aries and this is where things light up for you. I think this is really for you Aries personally as an Aries rising going to make this year definitely stand out to you more than 2021. It's going to bring a lot more kind of growth and the areas of you and what you want, what you want to initiate, like new beginnings. That is going to be really, really good for you, Aries. I really feel like Jupiter moving into your sign is going to give you a newfound sense of who you are, where you may have been feeling kind of lost or secluded with Jupiter moving through your 12th. Once it comes into your sign, it's like, oh, that's right. This is who I am. I remember who I am and also who I want to be, what I'm moving towards, what I'm growing towards, what I'm yearning towards, you know? And so things just become open for you. It's like, it's kind of like, wow, fi finally, like the, the door is now open. There's fresh air moving in, you know? Jupiter is like now finally far enough from Saturn and your 11th house, it's like, where things may feel heavy or restrictive in regards to what you wanna do in the world or socially, you may actually start finding more of a sense of yourself, your own talents, and be feeling more alive. Like that is just the general sense I really feel from you that is gonna be underlying from May to October, 2022. And then even when Jupiter moves back into Aries, which will it will be in Aries next year as well, it, you will come back to this. I think that time from May to October with Jupiter moving through your sign, even though it will retrograde back, it will be a massive time of really starting to see your own potential and bringing new things into the world. It's gonna be a time of new beginnings, starting new things and really looking at the areas in which you want to grow for you and feeling more into yourself and your own individuality, what you need to do to get to your goals or to grow, but also maybe even working on your body or your appearance in some way. I feel like this year, Aries, for you, you're gonna be experiencing a lot of healing in terms of the self. And the first few months could feel kind of like a flushing out or a purging or a detox, a, a surrendering or a letting go. But at the same time, once Jupiter moves into your sign, it's like you start kind of seeing the results of that work and you start wanting to kind of usher in this new beginning. And then it goes back into Pisces and then you're kind of finishing up work there the last couple of months. And then it'll move back into your sign where you can like really start to 
use that Jupiterian energy even more. So that is something that I feel is really, really going to be great for you, Aries, uh, moving into 2022. So another big thing that we have in 2022 is the nodes moving into your second and eighth house sector. Now, this is somewhat good, but also somewhat destructive if you're not careful. So with Scorpio in your eighth house, this definitely will bring up more things that need to be let go of, more things that need to be transmuted or transformed. It will definitely be a time of learning possibly toxic cycles or fears related to debt or financial issues in general or shared resources and finances. It can also be, you know, the eighth house can also deal with death and rebirth, but also uh, a general sense of getting into things that are more taboo, our fears and stuff like that. And so those are some other things that you could be seeing come up throughout 2022, but you may definitely notice them in eclipse season about from mid-April, mid-May, but then also like end of October, end of November timeframe as well in 2022. There will be kind of this focus on what needs to be changed financially in your life, what needs to be let go of, resources, priorities, money, possessions, you know, things that you own or things that, that you own with others or things that you owe or things that others owe to you. Those topics are gonna be very, very big in the year of 2022. And you're going to go through time periods in 2022 where you are going to want to break the mold of what you thought was possible with finances, where you are wanting to upgrade or level up with finances or do something financially in a different, unique, or even somewhat rebellious way, or where you are wanting to break free of certain financial restrictions. I really see that for you as well in 2022 Aries. But those peak time periods, like I said, again, are gonna be April through May, where you're really gonna see those financial themes. And then end of October, to end of November, again, where you're gonna really see those financial themes and kind of a clearing out of what you no longer want attached to you or what you don't want to be attached to anymore in regards to finances. The first few months of 2022 until around April, I feel like there's going to be, this is kind of gonna be the time that really sticks out one of the times that really sticks out the most to you through the year, I feel, because there are going to be a lot of things coming up with your 10th, 11th, 12th, and even eventually uh, your first house. And I really feel here, Aries, that this is going to be kind of like a for further learning lesson for you or experience for you that is kind of continued off lessons you've already been learning the last couple of years. And that is because we are starting the year with Venus retrograde in Capricorn, Mars moving into Capricorn as well, and all this Capricorn energy, and also Mercury retrograde in your 11th house, which will come back to Capricorn. And so major career-related themes, reputation-related themes, self-image, future goals, what you want for your legacy, what you want to achieve in the world, status, all of these things, also authority figures, are gonna be coming up majorly for you in the very first few months of the year. And it will then trickle into your social life, your ambitions, and you may go through time periods those first few months where you start feeling kind of that restrictive energy of Saturn again, or start feeling held back, delayed, etc., in certain ambitions that you have. And so this is gonna definitely be a time period where that escapism energy may come in or where you could start feeling like you just want to avoid things or you just want to escape them in some way or with something uh, or seclude yourself from the world. And so that would be, I would say, a really crucial time where you could start really focusing on healing. I know for me, when I go through major 12th house transits, what I've learned is to not... Uh, to not end up escaping, I have to end up going inward. I have to end up healing. Um, whatever it is that I'm trying to escape, I have to face it. And so that's something that could be very prevalent for you in those first few months of the year. And last but not least, Aries, something else that I wanted to bring up for you for 2022 is that your ruling planet Mars 
is going to be going retrograde towards the end of the year from October 30th of 2022 until January 1st of 2023. So those last few months of the year, Mars is going to retrograde and this is your ruling planet. And so this is a big deal anytime Mars retrogrades for you and Mars is going to retrograde in your third house sector, which deals with basically how you communicate your day-to-day influences, the things that you do on a day-to-day basis, your local environment, siblings, distant relatives, neighborhood, community, like the city or town that you live in. So those themes could be coming up. Also like short travels, things like that. It could be really be kind of reflecting on those topics around that time. I would say it to possibly not schedule a short trip those last few months of the year, or at least don't schedule one to a new place that you've never been before. It could be a great time for going back and like reflecting on something like visiting your hometown or something like that. But I would say to not do anything like new or out of the ordinary during that time. It may also be a time where communication is crazy. Either you could be getting lessons about kind of speaking your mind or needing to speak up about a certain situation, or you could be dealing with issues with others. Maybe you're getting into arguments or disagreements or something like that with other people very easily over your a difference of opinion. Um, so those are some other lessons that could come up, but either way, there's a major change in your environment or your perspective uh, around that time. So definitely be aware of those last few months with that Mars retrograde. So that is what I see coming for you in the year of 2022 Aries. Definitely let me know down below if you feel like a lot of this stuff resonates or if you could see a lot of this stuff happening or what you thought about this horoscope. And uh, also feel free to come back throughout the year and let me know if any of this stuff ended up being right for you. So with that all being said, we are going to move on to the next sign. I hope you guys have a great year, Aries. Bye. What's up, Taurus? Welcome to your 2022 year ahead horoscope. Basically, in this horoscope, I am just going to go over some of the bigger transits that we have in 2022. Uh, but don't worry, I will keep you updated with the more smaller personal transits and even the big transits even more so as we go along throughout the year year, month by month so make sure that you are subscribed to keep up with that but anyways this is going to resonate most of your taurus rising so do keep that in mind taurus this is another pretty big year for you like i know 2021 was likely a really big year for you you probably had a lot of lessons in terms of yourself and who you are and really had to deal with a lot of breakthroughs and changes and kind of like a push and pull between restriction versus change or settling versus you know progressing or doing something new and so I know there's been a lot especially in terms of your career dealing with authority figures your future your legacy what you want to do in life what you want to achieve your goals etc so this year though although there are certain continuations to those lessons from 2021 there is also like new things coming in here that are very very interesting and i would say you're definitely like one of the signs at the top of the list if not the top sign that i would say really is sticking out to me and for 2022 and you were also the top sign for me last year. For this year, it's kind of like a different reason, some similar reasons, but a different reason, and that's because the North Node will be moving into your sign. And so there will be a general theme of North Node lessons, which in, an, in your sign, in your first house, means lessons of the self, where you either need to be more of yourself or where you need to get in touch with yourself what you want, what you want to do, your own vitality, your own independence as you have Uranus in your sign, your own way of doing things versus others and your attachments to others or relationships or what other people think about you or certain fears that you have regarding those things. Lessons definitely with self and other I see coming up for you. Lessons in who you are and what you want and your desires versus other people's desires and what other people want and relationships, significant re relationships in your life. And so those are gonna be the really, really big lessons I see coming for you throughout 2022. There's gonna be a lot of breaking away of old attachments, but for some Tauruses, because the nodal axis is basically in opposite signs all the time. And so we can either find ourselves more attracted to the North Node or to the South Node. And so for some people, this could be a lot of healing in relationships 
and learning how to be more of who you really are, learning a lot of lessons about yourself and what you want in terms of your life and the world. But for others, this could be falling into toxic emotional patterns or habits within relationships and clinging to things and not allowing change or a metamorphosis to happen within the relationship or experiencing a lot of death and rebirth experiences in your relationships or with significant people in your life. And just to give you kind of like a clue, the last time that the North Node was in Taurus and South Node in Scorpio was in April 2003 until the very end of 2004. And so if you can think back to that time period and what lessons were coming up for you and how those lessons may have related or what lessons you may have received regarding self and other or you and relationships like significant relationships in your life you could get a lot of clues as to some similar themes that may come up or some similar experiences or similar people that may come back around during this time frame. So do keep that in mind. I'm not saying the exact same things will happen. I'm just saying it can give you clues because a lot of times, especially if you do a lot of work on yourself and you're a very self-aware person, you may notice like, hey, this feels very familiar. Like I've exhibited this behavior before or this person has been in my life before. And then you look back, a lot of times it will correlate with astrology, like something that's going on now that was going on when you first met that person or something that's going on now that seems similar to when it first happened, you know? And so that's why I just give you that 2003 to 2004 time frame because it can just give you some clues, maybe not exactly, you know, what's going to happen, but some clues as to things that you may be noticing coming up or working through for the next 18 months starting mid-January 2022. So, Anyways, so that's like the big thing, I think, for you, Taurus, and the year of 2022. We will also have Jupiter entering into Pisces and Aries in 2022 because it goes through Pisces rather quickly, but then it will retrograde back for the last two months of the year, basically. So from January to May 2022, Jupiter will be entering Pisces into your 11th house of friends, social groups, social circles, your aspirations and your ambitions when it comes to life and in the world in general. And so this could definitely be a time where you find yourself feeling more social or emotionally drawn to people in some way where you can feel like you are relating to a lot of people on a larger scale a lot more than usual or where you are feeling more creative and inspired to broadcast yourself to more people to put yourself out there more to do more maybe like creative endeavors or creative things this could also be a time where you find a lot of like-minded people uh, for those first five months of 2022 that you relate to where you're feeling more compassionate or where you're feeling more empathetic towards people maybe you are wanting to get involved in something that helps other people or something that's like humanitarian or some kind of charity or something like that like you're definitely going to be feeling a lot more connected to others in some way for those first five months and it may also be a time of really imagining what it is that you want in terms of life and your place in the world and then Jupiter is going to move into Aries from from May 2022 until October 2022 and during that time it's going to be in your 12th house which is definitely going to be a time of possible endings like endings that somehow bring benefit with them even if it may not seem like that at first or a time where you're really feeling like okay i just want to do me i want to be more secluded i want to do things on my own i want to do things myself i kind of went out of the spotlight it may be a time where you retreat a little bit more rather than put yourself out there so much definitely watch out for that time um, it could also be a time where you're really expanding in terms of your views on yourself but in more of a secluded way uh, where you're maybe really kind of rethinking what it means to be you and what it means to uh, do things in a more individual way. Then um, at the very end of October, Jupiter is going to retrograde back into Pisces until December 20th. And so during that last like you know, month and a half or so, like November until December 20th of 2022, that is gonna be a time where you're revisiting those 11th house Pisces themes of social networking and kind of experiencing more empathy for others and relating to others and compassion and all of that. And so it may be a time where you're kind of reimagining what it is that you want in terms of 
your place in the world and your ambitions, your aspirations, and your social life. And then Jupiter will move back into Aries again at like the very last couple weeks of the year of 2022, where you really will really start with kind of like initiating new things, but more in a secluded way, I feel here. So, or, you know, with Jupiter ruling your 11th house and moving into your 12th house, and then also ruling uh, your 8th house, it could be a time where you are maybe, uh, I, I really see this being like a time, Taurus, for some reason, where you're feeling more charitable, or you're trying to maybe help people in a way that is maybe more taboo or even where you are aligning with people that are maybe a little bit more excluded or it's kind of like the kid the kids that can't sit at the cool t kids table basically it seems to me that you are aligning with like-minded people but in a way that is a little bit more excluded i guess you could say like it's something that it's like people that may not be liked very much for some reason in some way. So that could be a possibility that may not be true for everybody. Uh, but it's kind of like a time where you could be kind of quietly doing something behind the scenes here in some way, shape or form. So we will have eclipses from mid April to mid May 2022. That's going to be a big deal with the eclipses in your sign and your opposite sign of Scorpio. So once again, the, the, that time period is going to to bring up those really intense self and other lessons and dynamics, but also around the end of October to the end of November, we will have eclipse season again. So that time period will also be pretty intense, bringing up relationships versus self and what you want versus what other others want, etc. the things that I've already named. So even though the Saturn Uranus square, which was kind of the big underlying transit of 2021, will be separating for the most part, it will still kind of be in effect uh, on and off throughout the year, getting uh, different transits, hitting it on and off, and then it will come close again to being exact in October 2022. So we will still have some of those reoccurring themes of what you want in your individuality, your independence versus, you know, the world or uh, authority figures, career, your future, your goals, your legacy, the things that you want to achieve in life, etc. And so there definitely can still be breakthroughs in those two areas as Saturn will still be in your 10th house moving through Aquarius throughout 2022. But also the first few months of the year really seem to be one of the most shakiest months of 2022 because we start off this year with Venus retrograding in your ninth house of belief systems, politics, law, religion, how you view the world and foreign travel, and also higher education. And so these are themes that you could be seeing come up with this Venus retrograde, but then we will have Mars entering Capricorn in January, really kind of adding more of a <laughs> more stress or intensity or challenge to the situation. And so this could definitely be a time where maybe you are reconciling different belief systems or trying to harmonize different opinions on something um, or reflecting on your belief systems, reflecting on your opinions on something. This could also be a time where you are maybe even mending certain relationships that may have gotten divided through belief systems as well for some Taurians. Then uh, we will have, you know, also in the first few months of 2022, we will also start having those same planets moving through the sign of Aquarius and moving over Saturn, and uh, which once again is your 10th house sector. So that could once again bring up a lot of themes of career related stuff, certain restrictions or authority figures within career that are holding you back and possibly finding a way to break through some of those things or challenge some of those things in some way. And then we will have, you know, a lot of the major Piscean stuff with Jupiter conjunct Neptune in your 11th house. And so there can be a lot of idealism for you Taurus this year. I mean, especially in those first few months, like around Pisces season, so March and April, uh, there could be a lot of idealism with how you're seeing the world. Um, and you want to make sure that Although it's good to have hope and although it's good to have faith or a higher sense of faith, uh, you do want to make sure that you are also balancing that out with being somewhat realistic and not getting too caught up in 
certain ideals that you have or being a little bit too far off from reality, so to say, because that could be something that you end up struggling with. Eventually that comes back to bite you later. So that's why I'm bringing that up. And then other than that, Taurus, at the end of the year, we have Mars going retrograde on October 30th, basically until the very beginning of 2023. And this is going to happen in Gemini in your second house. And so there could be a lot that starts coming up those last couple months of the year dealing with money, finances, priorities, and distractions regarding money, uh, finances, and priorities, possessions, income, what's of worth and value to you. And so, uh, and communications around those things as well as Gemini is ruled by Mercury. And so you could definitely see massive themes with money and resources coming up those last couple months of the year. Anyways, that is what I'm seeing for you, Taurus, for 2022. It's definitely a big year. It definitely has a different flavor to it. It has some different things going on than 2023, but also some of the same thing. So just keep that in mind. It's, it, it is somewhat a continuance in some ways not i wouldn't say as intense in those same ways like you're not going to be feeling an intense need to break free of something like you may have in 2021 um at least as intensely you may throughout especially maybe towards october 2022 you may start feeling that a little bit again but for the most part um there still will be a need to break free of certain things but in a new way and uh, to rebel and challenge certain things. I mean, you are going to be feeling very, very rebellious this year. You are going to be questioning a lot of things in your life. You're going to be challenging a lot of things. And so that is what I'm seeing for you, Taurus. Definitely let me know down below if any of this uh, seems like it will be true for you in 2022. And uh, feel free to come back and let me know throughout the year, but definitely by the end of 2022, um, I would really, really appreciate it. So anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the next sign. What's up, Gemini? Welcome to your 2022 horoscope. Let's go ahead and get into it. This will resonate most if you are a Gemini rising. And I'm basically just going over the really big, kind of bigger, broader transits of 2022. So make sure that you stay tuned on a monthly basis to hear some other important transits that aren't as broad or that aren't as long lasting uh, or won't affect us for as long of a period of time uh, on a month to month basis when I do the monthly horoscopes all year long. So make sure to subscribe and have your notifications on so you can get those monthly horoscopes. So anyway, Gemini, so 2022 is a little different than 2021. There are certain continuations happening from 2022, but definitely a different flavor, definitely a different vibe. And that is because the nodes are finally moving out of your sign and your opposite sign of Sagittarius. So all of these really intense karmic relationship lessons and lessons of the self that you've been learning uh, over the last 18 months since May 2020 and all through 2021 um, are finally ending um, mid-January 2022 because the nodes will be moving out of your and Sag's sign and into your 12th and 6th house sector. Now, I think that the nodes in your sign and your opposite sign this past year in 2021 definitely brought up a lot of uh, karmic lessons and relationships and lessons about self versus other, you know, um, learning more about yourself, learning more about who you are as a person and accepting all sides of who you are versus learning about yourself within relationships or through relationships, belief systems and opinions within relationships. A lot of you may have gone through a lot of shit in relationships or with others or with significant relationships. And that focus on those two areas of life though is finally kind of diminishing as we get into 2022 very early on, like mid-January. And so from then on though, you will notice all year of 2022 into 2023, a focus on 12th and 6th house themes. So there will be a lot of karmic or toxic things coming up within your sixth house sector of health, maintenance, day-to-day -day life routines and work. You know, the, the lifestyle that you have and certain 
habits or you know fixes that you have to get through the day or to do things that you need to do and this can involve like toxic habits uh, bad habits that need to be purged detoxed or let go of and so that's going to really start coming to the forefront gemini it's going to be a time if you're a gemini ascendant where you are really addressing kind of negative habits, bad habits in regards to your health or your work or your day-to-day -day life, lifestyle, and routine. And you're also going to be seeing how certain attachments behind the scenes or certain physical things that you, that you may avoid or that you may put off or may not pay attention to affect these things and also how your emotions can affect these uh, bad habits or these lifestyle choices or these routines or these you know, work issues that you may have coming up. And so it's gonna be a, a focus on and off throughout 2022 and halfway of 2023 of really reevaluating things that are not good for you and if you still need them. I mean, it's gonna be a really great, great time for breaking bad habits. Like if you're a smoker, if you are you know, a drinker, or if you, it could really be any kind of bad habit, you know, if your eating habits aren't really aligned or they start affecting your health, those kinds of things. And so you're really gonna be addressing where you put things off, where you hold on to things that or have certain attachments to things that you don't really need and that are actually like affecting your day-to-day -day life in some way and there's also it's also going to be a, a time of endings and learning practical comfortable ways to heal it's kind of like a balance between comfort and pleasure versus fear and pain you know like if something is comfortable and pleasure pleasurable for you but it is making you sick or it is putting your emotional health in a bad place in some way, then it needs to change, you know? And so it's gonna be a time of really ridding your life of a lot of toxic habits or bad habits or uh, emotional fears or emotional um, attachments that are somehow affecting your day-to-day -day life. So that is gonna be the big thing with the nodes and you're gonna see the peak time period coming up for those themes and those themes coming up even more so during eclipses, which the eclipse seasons for 2022 are mid-April to mid-May 2022, and then the end of October to end of November 2022. And so you really want to watch out for those time periods because those themes will be coming up even more so for you during those times. Whatever comes up during those times will definitely be very karmic and will be things that show you what needs to be worked on. Anyways, so the good news is we have Jupiter moving into Pisces and out of Aquarius, uh, where it will finally be kind of away from Saturn. Um, and so that is gonna be really awesome because Pisces for you is your 10th house sector of career, authority figures, reputation, your goals and what you wanna achieve in the world, your public image, etc and so it's going to be a time of really expanding there gemini it could be a time where you're putting yourself out there more where you're you have all of these different ideas where you are just feeling very hopeful and faithful in terms of your career where it really feels like you are expanding or growing um, you could be kind of tempted to do something more artistic or creative or to do something that maybe even helps other people. Uh, but either way, you're definitely going to want to put yourself out there. This could definitely be a time where you are even doing something creative uh, on social media or with media, with Neptune in your 10th house as well, or where you are helping others through social media in some way. But either way, it's gonna be a time where you're gonna be feeling very idealistic and where you're gonna be really focused on the big picture of what you want in life and finding meaning and purpose through life, basically. And so if you've been feeling a little bit lost in that area, uh, Jupiter here could somewhat expand that, but also uh, help you with that in a lot of ways in 2022. And that is basically gonna be from January until May, 2022. And then in May, Jupiter is going to move into the sign of Aries, which is your 11th house sector. And during that time, there could be a lot happening or there could be kind of an expansion 
of leadership within groups of people or like-minded people. I really feel like Gemini Risings could be very influential on a year like this if you wanted to be, okay? If you wanted to be. If you wanna put yourself out there and you wanna draw attention to yourself, you wanna broadcast yourself, whatever, this would be kind of the time to do it, I feel. The North Node is in your 12th, so that does kind of uh, hinder things in a certain way, but I do feel like within career or something that you're putting out to the public, uh, that could be, it, it could be very, it could be a very influential year or a year where you're feeling very inspired or where you're inspiring others in some way. So May until October 2022, Jupiter will be in Aries, your 11th house. And so this could definitely be a time where you are dealing with people more or really ambitious, feeling very, very ambitious in regards to where you're going in life, what you want to achieve, where maybe you're connecting with people more or people are connecting with you more. Um, and there's a lot of social activity going on around that time and then Jupiter is going to retrograde back into Pisces October 2022 until December 20th 2022 and so during that time frame there may be kind of a backtracking or a reflecting going on of the Piscean themes of how you imagine your life and your goals and where you're going um, a reflection on your ideals about your career and what you want out of life and what you want out of the world your reputation um, so that could be a time where you're kind of rebranding or you're reimagining what it is that you want for your future I will just say here and I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer here but like with Jupiter conjunct Neptune, especially around April this year, there could be some intense, like unrealistic idealism going on, uh, where you may not be seeing something clearly in the grand scheme of things. So do keep that in mind. It could be a little bit unrealistic or delusional. So you do want to watch out for that time period. So as, uh, <laughs> As you are a Gemini rising, your ruling planet is Mercury, and Mercury will be retrograde three times this year for the most part. Basically from like January, around January and February, Mercury will be retrograde from Aquarius to Capricorn. Uh, so during that time period, you may notice a lot coming up with reflection on your belief systems, education, uh, your views, your worldviews, and how that relates to other people, your views on social issues, etc. And then it will retrograde back into your eighth house, which may bring up topics of finance, business, etc. Money or money issues, shared resources. And then Mercury will also retrograde in your sign around like May into June in your first house. And so, um, and in your 12th, and so that will be a time where you are definitely reflecting on yourself and what it is that you want, who it is you are, how it is that you communicate, how it is that you come across, how you view yourself, your body, your appearance, etc., and how you express yourself in the world. And then it will kind of move back into Taurus, your 12th house, which will be a time of really like reflecting on the past and certain physical attachments that may need to be let go of. It could just be a time of being more secluded in some way. Then around fall, so probably like September, October timeframe, Mercury will retrograde in Libra, uh, which is your fifth house of fun, love, romance, children, dating, fertility, uh, self-expression, talents, and hobbies. And so this could be a time where you are working on these things or reflecting on these things. And then it will move back into your fourth house of home and family, where you could see topics of reflecting on home and family coming up. But those are the big Mercury retrogrades this year that you wanna watch out for those time periods. And then also we start off the year with Venus retrograde in your eighth house, really bringing up a massive reflection or uh, going back and kind of reflecting on or mending certain financial issues, issues with resources, shared finances, loans, business, things like that. So those topics will definitely be pretty big for you, what you need to conserve or what's worth, you know, what's worth it, what's of value. Those topics will be very big for you going into 2022. And then there will be a large focus as well around um, possibly needing to make extreme changes in finances, business, shared resources, etc or transforming um, something in that regard, transmuting something in that regard. Also on and off throughout 2022, there will be this intense urge to break free from anything that feels like it's keeping you trapped, especially 
bad habits, like I was saying before, and really uh, liberating yourself from things that seem toxic or negative in your day-to-day -day life or seem to be bringing you down or just have like a heavy weight or influence over your emotions. Either way, there's definitely going to be a large focus on health and what's of value for your lifestyle in 2022. And then at the very end of the year, Mars is going to retrograde in your sign Gemini, and this is going to happen from October 30th, 2022 until January 1st, 2023. So basically those last couple months of the year. Mars will retrograde in your first house, bringing up more topics of yourself and you. So even throughout this year, even though the relationship uh, topics are kind of finally dying down for you, there will still be some uh, repeats of learning more about yourself and your body, your appearance, and bringing in and, and how you view yourself. So with Mars in your sign, there's going to be an intense need to change something or go back and redo something in regards to yourself or something that you're trying to bring into your life around that time period at the very end of the year. You're going to be feeling more assertive uh, and uh, a little bit more, you're going to be feeling more in a leadership position. I feel like this year, Gemini, are, are a lot of the themes that I see for you. So definitely let me know down below if you could see any of this happening or resonating for you this year. Uh, and definitely come back throughout the year and let me know if any of this ends up resonating and at the end of the year and let me know if it all ended up resonating. I'd love to hear your feedback, Gemini. And with that, we're going to move on to uh, the next sign. Have a good year. Bye. Hello, Cancer. Welcome to your 2022 horoscope. In this horoscope, I'm basically just addressing the kind of more big, broader transits of 2022. But if you want to get a monthly horoscope from me and more of the general uh, transits, because there are other big transits I'm not addressing in these, but that's because they don't last as long or they won't have as much of a uh, lasting influence over us as some of the other ones. But if you want to get a month to month horoscope throughout the year, make sure to subscribe and turn your notifications on. Uh, and this will resonate most if you're a Cancer rising, as I said in the beginning. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. So Cancer 2022, I've been saying is definitely a different flavor than 2021. It does bring some more hopeful energy with it. It does still have its moments though, like any other year. Um, and I know the last two years have been a little bit more crazier than others. Um, and there will still be a continuance of that, even though at times it may feel like it's, it's not, um, but it's still gonna be there. So there will be some continuation of certain lessons or themes from 2021, but there will also be some other new energies in the air that I think we're gonna be kind of happy to experience. Uh, so basically, I think the really good thing is that the nodes have are moving out of your 12th and 6th house of Gemini and Sag. So you've been learning a lot about your mind, your subconscious, what goes on behind the scenes with you and uh, certain habits that you have that need to go, certain ways of thinking, certain mental traps that you can fall into, and you've been doing a lot of healing on the mind and uh, how it affects your day-to-day -day reality, your day-to-day -day belief systems, etc., your health, your routines, all of that. And so it's been a really massive time of deep exploration throughout 2021 of learning a lot more about how to heal these different sides of you or these different uh, habits or, uh, you know, issues of yours. Right when we move into 2022, like mid-January, the nodes will shift from your 12th and 6th house to your 11th and 5th house. And I actually just went through the nodes in my 11th and 5th house, and I can say it's definitely not as intense <laughs> as it being in your 12th and 6th, and then before that, your 1st and 7th. Um, it is definitely going to be a time though because the south node is moving into Scorpio. It's still going to bring up some deep uh, toxic things that need to be addressed, especially in terms of fun, pleasure, children, what you do to have fun in the world. And what I've really learned with the south node moving through the fifth and what I think is going to come up for you as well, Cancer, is certain toxic things that you do to have fun or to find pleasure or that deal with sexuality 
or that somehow deal with children or dating uh, may come up around the next 18 month nodal cycle. So from January 2022 until like halfway through 2023. It's gonna bring up extremes or dark things that you like to do for pleasure, which are not always bad or unhealthy or whatever. And I know that sounds weird, but like I could see this bringing up like, let's say that you have sex with people for the wrong reasons, or let's say that your intentions behind going out to the bar and drinking all the time just to have fun are not in the right place and it's starting to affect your life in some way. Let's say that the vision that you have for yourself and your future is getting diminished by certain things that you do for fun or entertainment or pleasure like that you take to the extreme, you know? So hopefully that makes sense. This could definitely also be a time with the North Node moving into your 11th where friendships and worth and value are really coming to the surface, where you're really having to address like worth and value and old toxic attachments that you have to worth and value or getting worth and value in shady ways with that Scorpio energy or finding pleasure in shady ways, like finding pleasure at the expense of uh, someone else or something like that. I mean, I just, I always see like cancer rising with Scorpio in the fourth, with the, in the fifth house as like a, like underneath it all, like a, a seductress, you know what I mean? Not all the time, right? Like that's going to more so depend on your placements, but Scorpio in the fifth house is like, yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's a big deal. And all cancer risings have that with the South node moving through there. I definitely think it's going to bring up some things that need to be addressed in regards to sexuality, in regards to things that you do for fun, etc. or toxic patterns or habits that you have with dating as well could be another thing. You know, if you're single and you're dating, um, or even if you are in a relationship, how you have fun or find pleasure or your sex life in that relationship could come up here with those Scorpio themes. It's bringing up fear, insecurity, lack, discomfort, um, things that, you know, the deep and dark emotional stuff that needs to be addressed and purged or transmuted in some way. And with the North Node in your 11th house of friends and social groups and aspirations and ambitions, those can also be things that can come to the surface. Where you fit in, in, in the world, um, finding like-minded people, or wanting to somehow, you know, something that you're deeply passionate about or something that you deeply desire, wanting to put that out in the world um, in some way, shape, or form. I could see a lot of, uh, like, cancer risings, getting into, like, you know, writing some kind of uh, book for fun. Like I remember one time I had a client who was a Cancer Rising and I'm pretty sure she was into writing like erotic, like sexual uh, stories, like books and stuff like that. With that Scorpio in the fifth house, it's like finding pleasure and pain in a weird way or finding pleasure in things that are deep dark or more taboo and then wanting to share that with the world so i know that sounds weird and it may not manifest like that for everybody i'm just giving examples here but either way there may be some toxic old things that come up um, that need to be healed from maybe when you were younger or maybe inner child insecurities that need to be healed things like that, but also finding your worth and value. You find your worth and value through healing those things and putting yourself out there or putting your vulnerable vulnerabilities out there, sharing your experiences with the world or with other people can in some way inspire them or help them have breakthroughs as well, I feel. So other than that, um, Jupiter is going to be in Pisces from January 2022 until May 2022. So it's finally moving out of your eighth house of Aquarius, where you've been having to do a lot of work in terms of maybe debt, finance, business, shared resources, shared financial shit, basically, <laughs> possibly like investments or even inheritance, things like that all deal with the eighth house. It's really addressing issues that are out of your control or that can bring up certain life crises. And so basically you've been really dealing with a lot of that eighth house stuff over the last year with Jupiter and Saturn moving in, um, being in your eighth house of Aquarius. So with Jupiter moving into Pisces, the first five months of 2022, 
like I said last year, because it moved in for a few months um, this past year in 2021, it's kind of going to be like a breath of fresh air. It's going to be a time those first five months of taking a vacation if you want to take a vacation. Um, because once Jupiter moves into Aries, there's going to be a very large, ambitious energy entering the room, entering the chat basically, where you're going to be very motivated to go for your goals, to do what you need to do in career, to go after what you want. And you're not going to be really worried about like enjoying yourself as much. Um, but with Jupiter and Pisces in your ninth house, it's going to be a time where you should take a cruise, get near the water. I mean, like, I think I used the analogy in the 2020, in your 2021 yearly horoscope, which I'll link if you want to listen to that. It's like kind of like opening, like you've been trapped in this room for so long. And then it's like Jupiter moves into Pisces and like you, the doors open and you realize that you're like, you've been trapped in this room, but it's like right on the beach and like the fresh air moves in and it hits you and it's like, oh my God, this is fantastic. And you got like the best view and you're like able to go out and put your toes in the sand. Like that is Jupiter and Pisces. And so Jupiter will be in Pisces the first five months of 2022. And so it's going to be a time where you are really feeling like, you know what, I have potential. There's things I want to do. There's places I want to go. There's things I want to experience. You are just going to be feeling like it, it, should, it really, it's just like a breath of fresh air. It really is like, that's like the best way, the best metaphor for it. Honestly, you're going to want to be learning new things. You're going to want to be experiencing new things. Um, your beliefs are going to expand your faith and your beliefs. Your hope for the future is going to grow and become bigger. Now, what I will say though, with Jupiter and Pisces, it's going to conjunct Neptune in April, 2022. Now this can be like an over idealistic view on something. This can be unrealistic, delusional. It can involve escapism. So you do want to pay attention and look out for those themes around April 2022 where it can get a little bit too big, too broad, like, and where you are not seeing something all the way clearly. So do watch out for that around April. But other than that, with it being in your ninth house, which is a really great place to have this, you're going to be expanding your beliefs. You're going to be expanding your learning. You're going to be probably getting really into spiritual topics, healing modalities. You may end up feeling like you want to go back to school for something or you want to take a course or like something like that, you know, could come up as well for a lot of cancer risings. You're just going to be really immersed in learning and growing in a very like creative, spiritual or artistic way. And then Jupiter will move into Aries from May 2022 until October 2022. And around that time, you that's going to be really like everything that you were imagining and like had the vision for with Jupiter and Pisces. When it moves into Aries, it's going to be a time of really initiating that and implementing that, I feel for you, Cancer. You are going to be really, really focused on career, your long-term goals, your future achievements, and like you're very much in like a leadership position, or you could even get put in a leadership position in career for some of you. Um, for some of you, you could decide that you want to start your own business, or you want to do something where you are like the leader, you are the boss, you are you know, you're doing something. Um, it's going to definitely be a time where you are initiating new things in terms of career and goals, etc. So that's going to be awesome. And then Jupiter is going to move back into Pisces um, from October 2022 until December 20th, 2022. So that short little time frame at the very end of the year, Jupiter will move back into Pisces. And that may be a time where you're kind of reflecting on these new things, these new ideas. And this is why I said you want to watch out for being a little bit overly idealistic or not being like realistic because once Jupiter moves into Aries, it's like on and then you start initiating things and then it retrogrades and then you're like, okay, so hold on a sec. Wait a sec. Maybe I, maybe I wasn't seeing this clearly. Maybe I was like overly idealistic about this. It may not be exactly what I thought it was, which doesn't always have to make it like a bad thing. Um, but Jupiter moving back in Pisces those last couple months of the year are really going to be a time where it's like, oh, wait, okay, we need to like reimagine this. We need to reflect on this a little bit. And then Jupiter will move back into Aries on December 20th, 2022 and be in Aries starting 2023. And that's when you're really kind of like, okay, yeah, we're pushing this out again now. Like, uh, so, so yeah, so that's Jupiter in 2022. Other than that, we have Mars going retrograde 
in Gemini, which is your 12th house uh, at the very end of 2022. So basically from October 30th until the very end of the year. So this was going to be a massive time of once again kind of getting back to that sense of healing the mind, possibly facing certain challenges um, of the mind or like needing to let go of certain things. Mars retrograde in your 12th can also bring up secrets or hidden things that you didn't know as well and especially in Gemini which can be a very like shifty sign at times or deal with communication. It could involve those types of things as well but definitely it's going to be a time where you are rethinking something or uh, needing to end something or let go of something or reflecting on the past and it's going to involve those gemini traits of the mind communication your environment what you keep around you who you keep around you and things like that so watch out for that at like the very end of the year um, it could be also a time where you end up feeling a little bit more secluded for some reason in some aspect of life or where you purposely like seclude yourself. There could be some kind of change that happens that kind of removes you um, from your day-to-day -day activities, your normal day-to-day -day activities for some reason or another to kind of sit you down and make you kind of reflect and make you kind of look at your perception on things and look at the way that you're thinking about things. So anyway, so that is what I see for you, Cancer, for 2022. Definitely let me know down below if you could see a lot of this stuff resonating. Um, and definitely let me know throughout the year. Feel free to come back and let me know and check in throughout the year. Um, also, feel free to come back at the end of the year and let me know uh, if any of this resonated. I'd love to hear your feedback. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a very uh, insightful year and we're gonna move on to the next sign. All right, my fellow Leo Risings, welcome to your 2022 horoscope. <laughs> 2021 was a massive year, right? Um, and 2022 will definitely be a little bit different. There will be some continuations, you could say, from 2021 that we are still kind of figuring out and dealing with, but there will also be a lot of other energies to work with that are new energies that we have not experienced, we did not experience last year, which I think will be a good thing to some regard, even though they will bring up different topics or different issues on their own, the 2022 will feel different. There will be some similarities to 2021 in regards to the themes or the archetypes or the lessons that we're, that we're seeing come up, but there will be other new areas of life that are being focused on. As I've been saying, I'm going over the more broader, bigger kind of transits of 2022, but there are still important transits that I'm not going over here just because they will not take as long or they will not last as long. So make sure that you are checking out your monthly horoscope as well and subscribing and having your notifications on. Anyway, so I feel like 2021 for us, Leo, was very much about seeing our potential, finding our potential, also figuring out what we want in terms of relationships and career, relationships and our future, goals and ambitions in the world and our public image and reputation versus significant people in our lives. It's been a very social year where we've learned a lot of lessons socially with friends and relationship dynamics. So um, 2022 is not going to be as social. Saturn will still be in our seventh house, but Jupiter will be moving out. And so there will still be a large theme around 2022 on relationships and getting serious within relationships, maturing within relationships, the commitments within relationships, but also dealing possibly with distance endings or seclusion within relationships as well, isolation within relationships. So those are other things that we can see, but also at the same time, it really is like cementing and bringing in really serious relationships that will stand the test of time. So anybody that stays through this Saturn transit in our seventh is definitely gonna be around for the long haul. So if you've had people that aren't very serious or that didn't stay in your life over the last year, it's likely because they, they're not meant to be in your life. Um, so do keep that in mind. And I actually explained Saturn in the seventh a lot more in the 2021 yearly horoscope for Leo, um, which I'm going to be linking down below and uh, in the eye above. So if that is something that you want to check out, I definitely would do that if you want to hear more about Saturn in our seventh, because it's still going to be in our seventh throughout 2022 and even a little bit in 2023. Anyways, Jupiter is going to be moving into our eighth house. Now it was here for a little bit in spring. I want to say May or April until like July uh, this past year of 2021. 
So around that time, it definitely started feeling like things were opening up, like things were definitely not as restrictive and heavy in the world, but also likely personally, it likely felt like there was more just of a sense of freedom or openness, like a breath of fresh air. And so Jupiter, that was Jupiter and Pisces for those few months before it retrograded back into Aquarius and things got very like restrictive and divided again. But with Jupiter moving into Pisces for the first five months of 2022, we're gonna really get to experience that again. And for you, this is the eighth house. Well, for us, this is the eighth house. And the eighth house deals with debt, resources, like shared resources and finances anything financial or involving resources that you have with another person or that's owed to you or that you owe. Uh, this is a time where we're really gonna be working on our finances, any business related topics in our lives. But also with Jupiter in the eighth house, this can bring an expansion of uh, financial opportunities or financial obligations or even financial debt. So you do wanna watch out for taking on too much financial responsibility with Jupiter in the eighth, but also for accumulating like a lot of debt, something like that. Um, it could be a time where there can be like expected inheritances. And that doesn't always mean like someone dies and boom, you get like a pile of cash. Like I also mean just in the sense of, you know, maybe someone hands something over to you or says, here you go, you can have my old car or whatever. Anything monetary or like that's a possession that you get from another person. Um, or that you give to another person. Any kind of transactional situation would be the eighth house area. Now, the eighth house also involves like taboo things, life crisis, uh, death, any kind of really big life changes that are kind of out of our control, but that bring a massive change into our lives that kind of set us into a new direction or give us a new perspective on life. Jupiter, though, is the most benefic planet, and luckily we do have Pisces, uh, in our eighth house which jupiter rules so i would say if anything like that did happen if some kind of crisis did come up you likely there's going to be a resolving of it um there's going to be a solution or there's going to be some kind of fortune or benefit that comes from it for the most part depending on depending on what else you have there if you have something in pisces in your eighth like saturn then it could be that could change things a little bit but if there is some kind of out of control change that changes our trajectory uh, there's going to be some kind of benefit from it or some kind of even healing that comes from it with Jupiter and Pisces. This could be a time where Leo Risings are really exploring taboo topics in terms of spirituality, creativity, learning, just a general sense of like expanding our awareness around taboo topics um, that could involve like the occult or spiritual methods or healing in some way. I could see for a lot of Leo Risings in the year of 2022, on and off throughout the year. And also around April, Jupiter will conjunct Neptune. Now this you do wanna be careful of. Um, April is a month you do wanna watch out for as a Leo rising because Jupiter will be on Neptune, which is gonna bring very intense delusion, escapism, idealism, and just really unrealistic shit, basically. So that could be a time, if, especially if we're dealing with something financial, it may be a little bit too good to be true. So you do wanna watch out for that. If you're trying to make some kind of big purchase or do something really big financially around that time or make some kind of big investment, it may not be what it appears. So do just keep that in mind for around April. Other than that, Jupiter will move out of Pisces and into Aries in May 2022 until October 2022, and then it will retrograde back in Pisces. So from May to October 2022 with Jupiter and Aries, this is our ninth house sector, which is beautiful for like belief systems, learning, exploring, self-exploration. I really see it's gonna be a really big theme here for Leo Risings from May till October, really exploring our place in the world and what we want out of life. Like once again, our potential, it could be a really big time of like feeling like doors are opening and we're starting to have new dreams about what it is that we want to do in the world, what it is that we want to explore, the experiences we want to have, the places we want to go. This could be a really big time for travel for Leo Rising. So if you've been wanting to travel, go new places, see new things, explore new, new topics in terms of learning or education, like go back to school or something like that. I don't have down here when Jupiter retrogrades, uh, but those first few months of from like May, June, likely July, or Jupiter retrogrades, 
will be a really, really great time for that and exploring those areas um, like traveling, getting out, etc. Um, it's going to be feeling like, okay, like I, I know what I want and I know what I want to do. And you're going to be really focused on growing your desires in terms of or making your desires happen and growing in terms of learning, education, travel, and just experiencing new things. Like opportunities and doors are going to feel open for you around that time, which is really cool. Then Jupiter will move back into Pisces October 2022 until December 20th, where then it will move back into Aries um, after December 20th, we'll be, where we will be able to explore that ninth house area a little bit more. But with Jupiter moving back into Pisces from October to December, that will be a time of like, once again, kind of reflecting on those eighth house topics and what we learned with uh, Jupiter in the eighth house. The last time that Jupiter was in the eighth house, was in our eighth house, was uh, 2010. It was like January to June 2010, and then like the very end of 2010 until the beginning of 2011. So around that time period, you can think kind of like if anything came up in your life, what was it? Those similar themes or traits could come back up in your life around this time. But yeah, those last couple months, like November, December, you're gonna be reflecting on those eighth house topics again. Also, something else that's really cool about 2022 is that the nodes are finally moving out of Gemini and Sag, which is our fifth and 11th house sectors. So we've been really, really learning what it is that we're passionate about and really learning lessons in having fun, which um, sounds uh, really great and everything, but in some ways it's, you know, it's still challenging. You know, where do we go too far when it comes to having fun, doing things that, you know, feel good, experiencing new things and allowing ourselves to just be like young and have fun versus where do we go too far with that? And also friends and social groups, social circles, and uh, learning a lot of like karmic lessons there. And then also the fifth house can deal with children and sexuality. So there may have been karmic lessons coming up there as well. But now with the nodes moving out of those signs and moving into our fourth and 10th house, there's gonna be a lot of karmic lessons coming up with our career, which we've already kind of been getting a lot of in 2021, but it's just gonna like exaggerate it that much more. But we're gonna be learning a lot in terms of career, public image, what we want out of life, like what it is that we're going towards, what it is that we're moving towards in terms of our goals, our future, our legacy, uh, authority figures, our reputation. We're gonna really be feeling like we wanna do something new, innovative, rebellious, and different throughout the year of 2022 in regards to our career and what we are doing out in the world, what we are putting out in the world. Now, the problem though, the issue with that at times is that we may be so focused on career or so focused on our future, our goals, our reputation, that we may be somehow ne neglecting our fourth house, home, family, our roots, our, basically our home base, you know what I mean, our, our, our nest. And so that could be an issue. And some may be so focused on home and family and the nest that they may not be pursuing what they want out in the world. And so it's finding a happy balance between career versus home and family. Now also the South Moon in Scorpio is gonna drudge up a lot of fears and securities and possibly, you know, some changes regarding home, family, and certain attachments that we have to home, family in the past, childhood, things like that. The fourth house can also rule over ancestry and our parents. And so these are big themes that we can see come up in 2022 with the south node moving through Scorpio. Scorpio is a sign that really tests our fears, our attachments, our insecurities and it shows us where we are emotionally attached to something and where we need to trans transmute that pain into power. And so because of that reason, with South Node moving through our fourth house in Scorpio, there may be a desire to cling to certain things regarding home and family, to cling to what's comfortable or to cling to chaotic situations even, to cling to toxic traits regarding home and family or attachments with home and family or the past that may be holding us back, that we may need to purge, detox, or let go of. And so it's gonna be really about, you know, the fourth house is a really tender spot. This is a lot of the times where the IC is, although that may not be the case for everybody, but if your IC is in Scorpio 
it is gonna be a time where you are really getting down to the depths of who you are and letting go of anything that does not serve you, really facing a lot of deep fears that maybe you've been hiding or that you keep private. You know, the fourth house is a very private sector of the chart. It's where we are, you know, able to really be ourselves, our full selves, where we are who we are when we're not around anybody else, you know, what we keep private from the world. So this is about letting go of maybe old secrets, old attachments, old things that we've been keeping hidden or private from from everybody else and about letting ourselves be vulnerable and finding the power in that as well. What we share with the world versus what we don't share with the world and finding a balance between that as well. Those energies will be most prevalent during the eclipses, which are gonna be in Taurus and Scorpio this year. So April and May, 2022 will be uh, the first eclipse season. And then the end of October till the end of November 2022 will be the second eclipse season this year. So those time periods are when you're really going to notice those those themes I just talked about with your 10th and 4th house coming up the most. So your public life versus your private life. So other than that, Leo, we will have the Mars retrograde coming through Gemini, our 11th house, the last few months of the year. This is definitely going to be a time that is centered around a focus on friendships, possibly also, unfortunately, gossip and he said, she said, rumors or drama and friendships and social situations basically. This could also be a time where we are even changing the way that we're thinking about friends or certain like-minded people in our life or the dynamics with friends and other people. So um, yeah, our social life is definitely going to be in the spotlight, but also our ambitions and hopes may come up as well, where we are kind of rethinking something to do with that as well. And how we put ourselves out there, how we broadcast ourselves to the world could also be something that comes up those last few months of 2022. I also see an intense focus on relationships from mid-February to even April for Leos with a lot of planets moving through the sign of Aquarius and moving over Saturn. So that could definitely be a period of time where relationships become a pretty large focus for Leos as uh, and it could also be a time where we are mending certain relationships or reconciling certain relationships or um, even finally ending certain relationships that we don't feel are aligned. I mean, I really feel like with Mars and Venus and Saturn in the seventh, it's going to be a time of alignment. Uh, and whether that is mending things or reharmonizing things or whether that is like, okay, this isn't in alignment with me anymore. Um, I feel like that is going to be a large focus. It's going to be about really getting real with yourself and uh, facing reality or facing um, some seriousness and relationships around that time, which doesn't mean that you can't find pleasure or that you can't find comfort in that because you can, but it's going to be a pretty, it's going to be a pretty, pretty big time for relationships for Leo. And if you have your descendant mid to end of Aquarius, so I would say anywhere from 15 to really 29 degrees Aquarius, you're going to really be feeling Saturn this year, or if you have any other planets there, you're going to be really feeling Saturn in 2022. So definitely be on the lookout for that. But um, anyways, that is what I see for you guys, Leo, for 2022. Hopefully this ends up resonating. Definitely let me know down below if you could see it resonating so far and feel free to come back throughout the year. Let me know as well if you see any of this stuff happening. I would really love to hear your feedback. I will see you guys in my other videos, Leo. Thank you for watching. What's up, Virgo? Welcome to your 2022 horoscope. In this horoscope, I'm going to go over the major, general, broader transits of 2022. Do keep in mind, though, that there are a lot of important transits that are happening in 2022 that I am leaving out because they may not have as long as a effect on us or they may happen more quickly. So make sure to tune in on a month to month basis where I go over your horoscope each month and we'll talk about more of those other important transits on a month to month basis. So just make sure that you're subscribed and that your notifications are on. This will resonate more if you are a Virgo rising.
rising, so do keep that in mind. And with that being said, let's get into it, Virgo. So basically, we start off 2022 with Venus retrograde in your fifth house of Capricorn. So you are learning how to maybe be a little bit less rigid in a certain area of your life. For some of you, this could be with a loved one, relationships, children, uh, dating, or just in life in general. Maybe you are learning how to have fun a little bit more or how to find joy and pleasure in your life a little bit more and being able to do it still in an adult type of way. I mean, you have Capricorn in your fifth house, so there's only so much uh, fun and pleasure that you're gonna allow yourself to have, right? With uh, Saturn basically ruling your fifth. So anyways, we start off with this Venus retrograde in your fifth. Uh, it could be a reconnecting or a reflection on relationships, dating, sexuality, children, and uh, what you find fun and pleasure in. And then we kind of move from that into a lot of Aquarian stuff. We have Mars and Venus that will be moving into Aquarius uh, in February and throughout March and even in April where they will eventually conjunct Saturn. That will be a time where you are maybe increasing your workload or increasing the responsibilities or obligations that you have on a day-to-day -day basis or where you are making different health or lifestyle choices due to certain things that are going on in your life. So that will bring in a really big focus on the sixth house in the first few uh, months of the year, you could say. I mean, even with the Venus retrograde, Saturn rules that for you and it's in your sixth house. So a lot of these things are really kind of revolving in the beginning of the month around your sixth house and Saturn will be in your sixth house again throughout 2022 as it was in 2021. And so there's already been kind of more of a heaviness, a restrictiveness, more responsibility coming up with your lifestyle choices, your day-to-day -day routines, your work life, and the day-to-day -day maintenance that you do to keep up with your health, your work, your body, your life, et cetera, has definitely been a little bit more rough likely uh, over the last year and will continue to, you'll continue to learn in these areas throughout 2022 as well. We also start off 2022 with Jupiter and Pisces until May, 2022. And this is really big for you, Virgo, because Pisces is your seventh house of relationships, significant relationships, other people. And so this will be a really great time um, for relationships. It will be a time where you are growing and expanding and learning a lot more, where you are feeling a little bit more connected to other people or where even like if you are already in a committed relationship where your partner may have a lot of opportunity come to them, where they may grow and expand and learn a lot or where they may see a lot of benefits coming into their lives. This could be a year where your partner just receives a lot, like they have a lot going on or they're growing in a lot of places or they're seeing certain things in their life kind of take off a little bit more. Jupiter also rules your fourth house of home and family. So it could also be a time where that is involved in some way as well with Jupiter in your seventh of relationships. This could be a time where you decide to buy a house with your partner or you decide to move with your partner or something like that for a lot of Virgos that are in relationships. now. If you're not in relationships, I definitely feel that there could be really a relationship entering your life in like the first five months. I feel like that would be probably like the best time for you if you're a Virgo rising to get into a relationship with Jupiter in your seventh. And I really feel like uh, more serious relationships can be established at this time. Or at least you may notice, even if you're single and not looking, you may just notice an increase in certain friendships or significant relationships in your life and great things happening to them or more of a focus on those relationships for whatever reason. So that's gonna be really awesome. What I will say is you do wanna watch out for April. With Jupiter moving over Neptune in April, this could be a time period where other people in your life or significant relationships in your life are seeming a little bit too good to be true or unrealistic uh, with Jupiter moving over Neptune. That can bring a certain sense of idealism, fantasy, delusion, escapism, etc. Like things just not exactly what they appear to be or uh, seeming too good to be true. Now for some people this could be that really it's like a fear that you have. Like maybe this is too good to be true but really it's not. You know it could play out differently for different ones of you. But you do want to watch out for those themes, those shadow qualities of Jupiter, Neptune where 
something could be expanding in a way that is very uh, delusional or it could just be too much around that time like just too fucking much it could be a little bit too out there or a little bit too a little bit too hard to grasp in some way and so that could be something else that you see around the April time frame with Jupiter conjunct Neptune. But then from May 2022 until October 2022, Jupiter will move into your eighth house of Aries. There, the focus will definitely start becoming more on your finances and finances that you share with other people or resources that you give to other people or that people give to you. Any kind of shared resources and finances, investments, loans, debt, so anything to do with transactional situations or relations in your life are definitely going to become more of a larger focus where this could be a big purchase you're making, this could be something business related, or this could be where you are maybe forking out a lot more. I will say that you do want to be careful because it may be very easy around this time with Jupiter moving through Aries that you end up taking on more that you can handle or taking on more financial responsibility that you can handle. So you do wanna watch out for that. That may not be the case for everybody, but uh, where you could like rack up more debt somehow. So you do wanna be careful with that, but um, that is what I see. It's gonna be a time where you are really kind of figuring out what's best for you individually versus everybody else regarding money, finances, resources, and any shared you know, finances or resources. The other really big thing that happens right in the beginning of the year is that the nodes will move into Taurus and Scorpio mid-January 2022. And basically the nodes have been in your 10th house and in your fourth house for all of 2021. And then even since May, 2020, where you've had to, there, there's just been a, a massive focus shift that has happened the last like year and a half on your career and your goals and your what you wanna do in the world, your ambitions, how you see the world, your perception of the world and uh, authority figures versus your home and family and your living situation, your past, your roots, where you come from, your ancestry, your parents, things like this. So basically your public life and your private life. And you've been really learning a lot of lessons in these two areas for the last 18 months. But like I said, in January, 2022, the nodes will shift into Taurus and Scorpio, which is your third and ninth house. So this will be a period of time where you start really learning about your belief systems, what you hold sacred, what it, what it is that you wanna do in terms of education, wisdom, sharing your wisdom, sharing your experiences, having new experiences, and really like achieving what it is that you want on a physical level to do with what you want in the world, to do with what you feel like your purpose is in the world while also letting go of attachments or old emotional attachments to certain ways of thinking, certain ways of perceiving, and certain conflicts even that you may have uh, on a day-to-day -day basis or in your local environment. This is definitely going to be a time of letting go of old, you know, toxic habits that you have on a day-to-day -day basis or that keep you from really being able to achieve what you wanna achieve materially in regards to your higher vision for your life and what you feel your purpose is, et cetera. It's also gonna be a time of learning and possible travel as well, learning new things and getting out of your comfort zone and possibly even traveling to some extent uh, for Virgos, but yeah, this could also be a time where you're letting go of toxic attachments in terms of family, siblings, things like that, or at least seeing a theme come up with certain toxic dynamics or attachments with siblings, relatives, old places, people, and things basically it could be a really big theme that comes up with the South Node in Scorpio in your third house. This could also bring up toxic shit or just toxic people, places, environments, etc. to do with your neighborhood, town, city, community. Also certain routines that you may have or certain places that you may go that you have certain attachments to that need to be healed in some way. The third house is kind of weird like that. So I know it's kind of, it, it may be hard to interpret on some level. It may be a little bit more clear 
uh, once you know the nodes shift into your third and ninth house, but your day-to-day -day interactions are going to become more prominent in some way. The things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis and any kind of fear or conflict or insecurities, you know, just kind of like shadow behaviors that you have or shadow things that are happening to do with those things that come up on a day-to-day -day basis, how you go about or deal with your day, the things that you're interested in, your skills, things like that as well with the third house, your outlook on life and your world views and your belief systems, your morals, your ethics, all could also go through uh, a really big change around, you know, over like the next year and a half. You could start learning about some kind of new practice or new belief system or a uh, new philosophy or something like that, that somehow helps you, that you somehow bring down to a day-to-day -day practical level to help you with day-to-day -day issues that you may be having. And you're gonna really notice these karmic themes coming up the most during eclipse season in 2022. And those eclipse seasons are from April to May uh, 2022, and then also like the end of October until the end of November 2022 as well. So during those time periods, that is when you may see those themes coming up the most in 2022. We also have Mars retrograding in Gemini, which for you is your 10th house. And this will happen at the very end of the year on October 30th and basically last the last couple months of the year. So this will be a massive time Virgo where you could be really changing or rethinking something going on with career, your life, your legacy, your goals, your future, and authority figures, your reputation, etc. This could be a massive time where you are really thinking about long-term goals and what it is that you want to initiate in terms of long-term goals or certain challenges or hurdles that you've been having with career, long-term goals, authority, etc., that need to be worked out. Those are some really big themes that you could see coming up around this time. And somehow that Mars retrograde could tie in finances, business, or your and your local environment in some way so definitely uh, watch out for those last couple of months because that is going to be a, a pretty big time of changes regarding your career or what it is that you want to do in the world your goals and achievements etc as a mercury ruled sign mercury will be going retrograde in the air signs and then they will it will every time what retrograde back to the previous earth sign so Mercury will retrograde in Aquarius in January and February and then move back into Capricorn. So that will be once again, your sixth house of your health, day-to-day um, -day maintenance to stay healthy or to keep in a routine, work, etc. So those are some things you can see coming up there and then we'll retrograde back into your fifth house of love, fun, pleasure, romance, sexuality, children. So those are other things that you could see. It will also retrograde in Gemini, your 10th house, May, June timeframe. Uh, and that will be about your, once again, career and public image, long-term goals. And then it will retrograde back into Taurus, uh, where it will bring up belief systems, higher education, worldviews, et cetera. And then it will retrograde in Libra and Virgo, and that will be around September and October. Uh, which will bring up money, finances, and how you share that with other people and resources, priorities, and then also self and your own individual uh, desires, wants, health, appearance, body, etc. That is what you're going to see with the Mercury retrogrades. But that is what I'm getting for you, Virgo, for 2022. Definitely let me know down below if this ends up resonating or if you could see a lot of these things happening. I would really love to hear your feedback. And we are going to move on to the next sign. What's up, Libra? Welcome to your 2022 horoscope for the year ahead. With this horoscope, I am basically just going over the more broad general transits, uh, the bigger transits for this year, while I will be focusing on a lot of other more important transits and more of the monthly transits and the monthly horoscope. So definitely make sure that you are subscribed with your notifications on so you don't miss your monthly horoscope 
And uh, yeah, also this is for Libra risings. It will resonate most for your rising sign because that is how I'm doing the horoscope with Libra on the rising. So let's go ahead and get into it. So Libra, uh, we start off this year with your ruling planet, your chart ruler, if you're a Libra rising, going retrograde, Venus. In Capricorn, basically, this is your fourth house sector. So this is definitely bringing up a lot of things that may need patching up in terms of the home life, the family, the roots, the foundation, the past, your childhood, parents, ancestry, etc. So anything that needs patched up in your private life is going to be very big at the start of the year for you. You're going to be really focusing on how to make things more stable, how to make things more secure, more reliable, and really getting back to your roots and possibly, you know, digging stuff up to deal with it or address it in terms of home and family. Now, this is also affecting your love life, uh, possibly children, sexuality, dating, uh, anything that you do for fun or pleasure. This could be a time where you're kind of needing to lighten up a little bit or do some kind of healing work on your inner child. Find ways to have fun in some way. And for some people, it could be getting more serious and buckling down. But the first few months are definitely going to be centered around these themes I see here for you. And then we also start off the year with Jupiter in Pisces in your sixth house of health, day-to-day -day routines, your lifestyle, the things that you do on a day-to-day -day base basis to for maintenance to live the life that you want to live. So these are the mundane, boring tasks that you really don't get credit for, but you know you need to do. And with Jupiter entering this space, this is about learning and growing in this area. I feel like this is going to be a very healing time with Jupiter in your sixth house uh, until May 2022, where you will be really focusing on getting more in touch with your energy, with your emotions, and how that affects your day-to-day -day life. With Jupiter in the sixth I, and Pisces, like a lot of Libra risings with Pisces in the sixth, I always see a lot of like dance, art, uh, music, yoga, some kind of energetic practice as well for really like being able to move energy. I think that can be very, very helpful for Libras around this time where you may see those themes coming up. But it's really taking more of a holistic pr approach to your health and your day-to-day -day routines and lifestyle. So that's going to be coming up for you pretty big the first five months of the year. It could also be a time where you're growing or expanding in your health, where you are finding new ways to add to your lifestyle, like new practices, new diets, new lifestyle tips to kind of add to the mix um, that really help you with the day-to-day -day maintenance of your life. So you do want to be careful though around April <laughs> um, because, and really just this Jupiter transit in general through your sixth, it could also be adding on somewhat unhealthy uh, maintenance devices or fixes or habits, you could say where you're kind of like, oh, well, this helps, but maybe it comes with its own issues um, or another set of issues. And so you just wanna make sure that you're not fixing one problem with another problem, because that could easily happen here, I feel, for Libras. And with Jupiter moving over Neptune in April, 2022, it could be a time where maybe you're not seeing something very clearly. Uh, there could be something deceptive going on or something kind of too idealistic or unrealistic. So. You, it is a very hopeful transit and gives a lot of faith and optimism, but can also be somewhat deceiving. So you do want to watch out for April, that time frame. It could be also a time where you're really like engaging in something like some kind of escapism or something like that, or dealing with some kind of escapism. So you do want to be careful with that. Then from May to October 2022, uh, Jupiter will be moving into Aries which is your opposite sign Libra. So this is a really big deal for you. Jupiter in your opposite sign is definitely going to bring some benevolence to your relationship sector. This can be your partner or this can just be significant relationships in your life in general, but there is definitely going to be some kind of expansion or focus happening here when Jupiter moves into your opposite sign. There could be a lot going on with your partner around that time or there could be uh, some kind of expansion or growth in their life that is really taking up a lot of their time or focus. 
they could see a lot of benefits. They could see some kind of expansion happening in their life or uh, really cool things happening uh, for them. And if you're single Libra, that could be a really great time to meet significant relationships with Jupiter in the seventh house. Now you could also see either you or your partner having a little bit more of an individual focus happening. Maybe they are a little bit more focused on something going on in their lives that they're doing on an individual level, like not so much as a team, but more so focused on like them or something that they're doing in their life could be taking up some of their focus there. So that could also be the case for some Libra risings. So the other big thing that's happening uh, in the very beginning of the year, so mid-January, we have the nodes finally moving out of Gemini and Sag, your third and ninth house where they've been uh, since May 2020. So there's been a lot that's changed uh, karmically and kind of like in a faded way as well with your perspectives, your opinions, your belief systems, um, and your outlook on the world, your outlook on life, your possibly political views or religious views. You know, there's just been a lot of changes in these areas since May 2020. Your perception and the way that you view things and the way that you think about things has changed a lot. These areas can also deal with education, um, educational changes, also travel. And so those are all, those are other areas that could have been kind of uh, a similar theme in the background for you for the last 18 months. So with the nodes moving into Taurus and Scorpio, this is your second and eighth house Libra. And so this is going to bring up a lot to do with money, finances, resources, material things, income, priorities, but also your partner's money or money that somehow you get that comes from somewhere else or money that you give to other people. So this can look like a share, like shared finances, shared resources, money that you owe or money that's owed to you, any kind of transactional monetary situation that either deals with money or resources. So basically, those are the big themes coming up for you in the year ahead and really the next 18 months ahead once the nodes move in the middle of January. Um, so with the south node in your second, it's definitely going to be a time of releasing certain emotional attachments or healing certain emotional attachments that may not be the best for you, that uh, or certain insecurities, certain fears of lack, things like this. It's definitely going to be a time of uh, readjusting or transmuting your priorities in some way. Really letting go of things that are just no longer healthy for you, uh, just devices or priorities or things that you put worth into that you no longer need in your life and really re-evaluating your needs and what needs you have because you are emotionally attached to them or what needs you really have. While also bringing quite a big focus on um, maybe breaking free of a certain financial situation or trying to liberate yourself or add to your finances by doing some investing or taking financial risk. So those are some things that really could come up for you this year with the nodes moving through your second and eighth house, Libra. So other than that, Libra, we have Mars going retrograde at the very end of the year on October 30th until the beginning of 2023 um, in Gemini, which for you is your ninth house sector, once again, of belief systems, belief systems, ideologies, philosophies, worldviews, higher education, learning, travel, all of these things. So with Mars retrograde here, it's definitely going to be bringing up those topics those last few months of the year where you could really see kind of changes happening in those topics again or even some intensity or debate happening within those topics where maybe you are readjusting or reevaluating uh, certain opinions that you have or certain opinions of others. It could also somewhat be a time of intense kind of aggression or conflict related to belief systems, morals, ethics, etc. The ninth house can sometimes deal with law um, as well, so th that could be something else possibly. And somehow this could also involve your relationships because Mars rules over your seventh house and your second house of money and resources and income. So those are some other things that somehow could have something to do with that Mars retrograde in your ninth. So definitely be aware of that. Venus does not retrograde again this year. It only retrogrades 
um, in the very beginning of the year, well, really the, the end of 2021, but it kind of leads over into 2022. Um, and Venus is your chart ruler, so. But that is basically what I am seeing for you, Libra. If you're a Libra rising for 2022, definitely let me know down below if you could see some of these themes coming up or becoming pretty relevant in your life in the year ahead. I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, and feel free to come back at the end of the year or throughout the year and let me know as well. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What is up, Scorpio? Welcome to your 2022 horoscope for the year ahead. I hope you guys are doing well. And yeah, let's get into it. I'm going to go over the big, general, more broader transits of the year ahead, but there are also other important transits that I'm leaving out just because that they would take even longer and they are not as long lasting as some of these other transits that I'm going to go over. So definitely make sure that you tune in on a monthly basis to my sign horoscopes each month for your sign. Uh, so make sure to subscribe and make sure the notifications are on so you don't miss those. And yeah, this will resonate more if you're a Scorpio rising, as I said in the beginning. Let's go ahead and get into it. So Scorpio, I would say that you are the second most sign that is definitely, well, you were Aquarius. You're up there on the top of my list that is a sign that really sticks out to me for 2022. That makes me experiencing a lot of, a lot of like, basically like the most growth, if I could say, uh, this year because of the nodes moving into yours and your opposite sign, uh, Taurus. So the nodes will finally be moving out of Gemini and Sag where they've been in since May, 2020, mid January, 2022, they will be moving into your sign and Taurus's sign. So the South node will be moving into your sign. This is definitely going to be a time Scorpio a year uh, really also until 2023 as well, where you are letting go of a lot of old attachments to the way that you see yourself, a lot of old emotional attachments to do that, that you've held on to that you may feel make you who you are a lot of pain or fears or insecurities that you know, maybe you've been holding on to that you thought made you who you were, but maybe not so much anymore. You know, this is going to be a time where you are going to see who you really are. It's going to be a time of intense healing in regards to who you are as a person, your identity, how you see yourself, how you show up in the world, um, your body, your appearance, how you feel about yourself on a deep level. You know, all of these things are going to be really coming to the forefront for you in 2022 and you're going to be letting go of old things or old toxic like you're going to be seeing old toxic maybe behaviors or attachments coming up old shadow traits you could say like your shadow self um, could be coming up a lot that you have to heal and work through and I really feel like you're going to have a choice this year Scorpio where it's like I could keep falling back in these old behaviors these old versions of me you know, how I used to be or how I would have addressed this before, or I can move forward and do things differently. I can heal these things. I can allow myself to be vulnerable. I can feel these things. I can face these fears and I can find my power. And I feel like that's going to be really big for you this year. And with the North Node moving into your opposite sign of Taurus, there's also going to be a lot of focus on relationships and others you versus others or self versus others kind of lessons. You know, how much do you give? How much do you take? Uh, what boundaries are appropriate, etc. You know, what relationships do you want to be in and which ones do you not want to be in? You know, this is going to be an intense time for really figuring out who you want in your life and the version of you that you want in your life. It's going to be really realigning you and the people in your life, the significant relationships in your life, the commitments that you make with other people. So there's going to be a pretty massive balance between doing, you know, what you want and focusing on you versus focusing on relationships. So that's going to be, I think, a really underlying theme that you're going to see kind of throughout 2022 and into 2023 as well with the nodes in your sign and in your opposite sign of Taurus. And you're going to notice these peak periods the most during the two eclipse seasons this year, which are from April 
2022 to May 2022. So like mid-April to mid-May 2022, and then also the end of October until like the end of November 2022. Those time frames are really going to bring up those themes for you the most. Um, but it's still going to be something that you're learning about throughout 2022 as well. So it's something else that we have happening in the very beginning of the year is Jupiter will be into Pisces again, finally, uh, which is your fifth house sector, Scorpio. So this, I feel like, is really good. Jupiter will be here for the first five months of 2022 until May 2022. And so you're going to have a lot of intense self-exploration themes coming up, a lot of exploring your interests, your hobbies, creativity, artistry, you know, feeling more creative, feeling more artistic. Also, the fifth house can rule children and kind of like where we feel childlike, where we want to have fun. So there could be like a pretty big like childlike energy into the air, uh, in the air for you for the first five months. And there could also be a lot of exploration in terms of creativity and what you find fun, what you find pleasure in, sexuality, dating, things like this. So this area of life is going to be cool for you. The first five months, you're going to be wanting to have fun. You may be wanting to party. You may be wanting to uh, just kind of like refresh yourself in some way, you know, do, th do things that feel good, that feel refreshing, that really make you feel connected in a fun and kind of like loving way, whether to other people or to someone that you're dating or whatever the case may be. Now, what I will say is you do want to watch out around April 2022 because Jupiter will conjunct Neptune and that can be a time of escapism mysticism, delusion, fantasy, like things not being 100% what they appear or getting a little bit too carried away, too idealistic or too out of control. So you do want to watch out for that, that you don't end up having like too much fun where you kind of cross the line into, oh, okay, like now I don't have any boundaries and I'm just kind of like neglecting other things or this is becoming a problem or I'm partying too much and yeah like you just want to really really be careful with that escapism energy and that kind of like delusional energy around that time. In May 2022 Jupiter will move into Aries your sixth house and that is going to be a time of like work boss bitch type of energy like you are gonna be like okay i need to get motivated i need to like i've partied and i've had fun and i fucked off enough like i'm ready to start like getting some shit done leading some shit doing some shit um with jupiter and aries it's really gonna bring out more of like a motivational energy in within you you may get into exercising or some kind of physical activity or fitness or diet or you know, wanting to expand your lifestyle or add to your lifestyle in some way to make it more, to make it work more efficiently or to put yourself to the test in some way. Either way, there's going to be like a time where you're really focused on like work, uh, health, day-to-day -day routines and maintenance within those day-to-day -day routines that to have the lifestyle that you want to have to keep the lifestyle that you want to have. So then Jup Jupiter will move back into Pisces like the very end of 2022 from like October to December 20th, 2022 for that short period of time where you will kind of reflect again on those Piscean themes and where you may start feeling again like you want to kind of you know, take a break or have fun or whatever, but you're going to be seeing them from a new side at that point. So it may not be as intense, like, oh my God, I'm just going to say fuck everything and have fun because like, whatever, we've been through a lot these last couple years. So um, yeah, and I feel like a lot of people are going to be really doing that with Jupiter and Pisces. Like, you know, we went through a lot. People are going to be like, you know what, fuck this. Like, I'm, I'm having fun and I don't care and like, just deal with it, you know? And so um, and I feel like you're going to definitely, like, out of all the signs, I think, with Jupiter and Pisces in your fifth, like, you may be feeling that uh, possibly, like, the most. If you're Scorpio rising, like, you may be the one throwing the parties and, like, <laughs> just, like, really, like, yeah, like, we are just, just letting it all out over here, okay? So, anyways, um, so other than that, Mars, your ruling planet, Scorpio, will go retrograde at the very end of the year, from October 30th until like the end of the year in Gemini, uh, which is your eighth house. So this may be a time like these last few months of the year where you are really reflecting on financial decisions, on investments, um, on shared resources, shared finances, 
loans, bank statements, you know, something like that could come up, something financial or to do with your resources could come up around this time that you need to focus on or pay attention to for whatever reason these last couple months or that you're working towards fixing in some way or addressing certain challenges that you may be having in this area. It could kind of get a little bit more serious or you could kind of be reflecting on certain decisions around that time. Um, I want to say maybe more serious, but I, I mean, it could for some people. Like if there were financial hits or losses, there may be some kind of like coming back around to that at some point uh, during that Mars retrograde in your eighth. But you're, there's definitely going to be a focus on money, finances, resources, and money that's owed to you or money that you owe with other people or money that you share with other people or resources that you share with other people that you have with other people, etc. That is basically everything. I feel like that went by a little bit quicker than usual for some reason, but that is basically everything. Saturn will still be in your fourth house throughout the year um, as it was in 2021 and Saturn in your fourth has been kind of bringing more of a serious sober energy to fourth house themes of home family your living situation your roots past etc so it could be a time where you are really having to get serious about those themes or really seriously thinking about um home and family stuff like you know where you want to progress in terms of home and your living situation and those themes are going to be still coming up for you all of 2022 as well. You're still gonna be learning a lot of lessons in those areas of home and family. Home and family life could be a little bit restrictive as well or strained or distant or detached. Um, that could be something else that some Scorpio risings are feeling. So um, yeah, but with all that being said, Scorpio, I believe that is everything. Um, thank you guys for watching. Definitely let me know down below if you could see this relating to you. Uh, and feel free to come back throughout the year and let me know if it does relate. I'd really love to know. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. Alrighty, Sagittarius, welcome to your 2022 year ahead horoscope. In this horoscope, I'm going to be going over the major kind of broader general transits for the upcoming year. But do keep in mind there are important smaller transits. And what I mean by smaller is they just may not last or impact us for as long of a period of time throughout the year that I will go over month by month in your monthly horoscope. So make sure that you are subscribed and your notifications are turned on throughout the year so you get your month to month horoscope. But um, anyways, this is for Sagittarius risings. As I said in the beginning, your rising sign will relate most of these because that is how I am reading them. And let's go ahead and get into it. So Sagittarius, good news is the south node is moving out of your sign uh, where you have had to learn a lot about yourself uh, over the last 18 months. A lot of karmic lessons to do with yourself versus relationships and your own life and how you view yourself and you know, how you uh, go about things and how you show up in life and your appearance, your body, etc. Really kind of dealing with karmic situations and uh, possibly issues or old habits surrounding those things for the last year and a half. That is now finally dissipating mid-January 2022 as the south node will move out of your sign and the north node will move out of your opposite sign and they will move into your 12th and 6th house. Now, what this means is with the south node moving into your 12th house, there is going to be a underlying focus coming up for the next 18 month period starting in mid-January 2022 that deals with detoxing toxic old behaviors or traits to do with the past or things that need to be let go of it's going to be an intense time of healing and facing like fears or uh you know self-sabotaging behaviors insecurities all of these types of things it's definitely going to be an intense time for healing with the south noon moving through your 12th it may be very easy to resort back to old behaviors or ways that are self-defeating or self-sabotaging or self-destructive in some way if you're not careful but it can also if you are you have a choice you can either resort back to those old ways or you can make a choice to heal that is really where it's at for sagittarius coming up in the year 2022 and you're also going to be seeing how these self-destructive emotional 
ways or emotional habits or emotional attachments to these ways can affect your physical day-to-day health, reality, job, uh, routine, vitality, you know, how they can make you like actually physically sick if you don't deal with them. And so it's definitely going to be a time where you're going to be kind of going through this back and forth balancing act of being more secluded and dealing with these kind of like old habits or old emotional attachments and and like self-destructive patterns versus being more visible and focusing on your day-to-day reality and being in the world and kind of, you know, in your normal day-to-day life versus, you know, kind of being secluded or detached from it. And so there's going to be this kind of balancing act of your emotional world and how that affects your physical world and also kind of what you do behind closed doors and how that affects your physical world. I know for me, like from what I've seen with this, with myself and others, it can be a very intense time of healing. You can get a lot of healing done. So it's not all bad, but healing is not easy. It's not It's not just like you can't just snap your fingers and do it. You know what I mean? It's it, You do have to face certain things that you've been holding in or that you've been avoiding or that are subconscious, you know? And that can be difficult, but the actual healing of it, like once you do that, the aftermath of it is actually beautiful. And I think that is what a lot of Sagittarians will realize over this upcoming 18 month cycle of the nodes moving through your 12th and 6th house. It's going to be a time where, yeah, you may have to face some deep, powerful, intense, emotional things that you've been holding on to or that you've been afraid to let go of. But once you can face those and release them and transmute that pain into something that actually is empowering and you can realize that that affects your day-to-day physical vitality, um, that I think is going to be very empowering for you. So yeah, 2022 starts off with a different energy than it's been. Like, yes, there are certain continuations from 2021, but uh, there's definitely going to be a large focus on healing for Sagittarians over the next year and a half. So just prepare for that. Like, yes, you may get pulled into some past stuff, some past cycles, some past behavioral patterns may feel the need to be more secluded. But if you resort to your old ways, if you let that consume you, which some may need to, and maybe that's how they, you know, move through it. But if you, if you do that, you're just going to get what you always got. So remember that. But if you actually allow yourself to face these things and get to the root of these things and kind of be like an investigator of your own subconscious depths and the things that you keep hidden and really go down there and face them and and like find a way to transmute the pain into power you know what i mean allow yourself to feel the things allow yourself to be vulnerable if that's what it takes allow yourself to really just do shadow work you know i have a whole video on youtube on shadow work it's free i went into depth but you can go watch that video if you're ever wanting to know like how to do shadow work um and because you're gonna want to have to do it yourself with a sag rising you got sag in the first scorpio in the 12th this is something that you're going to want to do yourself because I just don't think that you're going to really listen to anybody else <laughs> like trying to tell you what to do here. Uh, these, there's, these are fixed signs, Taurus and Scorpio in your 12th and, and 6th. You know, this is something that you're going to have to probably likely do yourself because I, I don't, I mean, maybe some of you may listen uh, to others if they try to help you with this, but it, it's definitely going to be a journey of like kind of walking through your own skeletons and not being scared of them anymore you know, finding a way to like actually feel them and release them rather than hanging on to them and storing them in your closet, right? So that is really what I feel for you, Sag. And and throughout the year, you're going to get intense breakthrough moments where you feel liberated or where you, um, you know, want to break out of these old cycles or these old patterns or where you want to rebel against these old things. But I think all in all, it's going to come down to uh, feeling your pain and like healing it and being able to see the beauty in it. You know, Taurus and Scorpio, that is one of the biggest lessons of this axis is seeing the beauty in your pain. And um, 
you know, pleasure versus pain, you know, and kind of like finding that balance between the two. And so anyway, so we also start off with your ruling planet Jupiter in your fourth house of Pisces. So Jupiter is now finally in Pisces and it will be in Pisces until May, May 2022. So with your ruling planet in Pisces, your fourth house, this is definitely going to bring a large focus to home, family, and private matters. Um, so I definitely see this being a year, Sag, where you are a little bit more secluded, where you are a little bit more private with the south node in your 12th house and then also Jupiter in your fourth house. This is definitely going to be a time where you are a little bit more to yourself or maybe you're just a little bit more focused on past issues or family issues, living situation, um, home, you know, you're just feeling a little bit more to yourself. You are feeling a little bit more secluded or maybe you're purposely wanting to be a little bit more secluded. And Saturn is also in your seventh or your third, sorry. Um, so you are wanting to, you know, you may not be really wanting to like go out and about a whole lot or do a whole lot, you know, it's just kind of going to be a time of like, you know, you can still get things done if you want to. You can go to work, you can do the things that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. But other than that, I feel that you're gonna be a little bit more focused inward. Um, it's definitely gonna be a time where you are focusing more inward. Now, after May though, Jupiter is gonna move into Aries until uh, October. So from May to October, Jupiter will be in Aries, which is your fifth house sector of love, romance, fun, children, creativity, your inner child, where you have fun, where you play, where you find pleasure in things. Um, it can also rule sexuality and creativity as well. And so those themes could really come up for you with Jupiter and Aries. I do see that May to October time period with Jupiter and Aries maybe being a little bit more uh, fun and lighthearted for you, or maybe you're, maybe you're not as focused as being inside, or maybe you're not as focused on home and family or internal stuff, but maybe you're a little bit more focused on how you can have fun and how you can do things for yourself that bring you a sense of joy, basically. And also I wanna say this, with Jupiter in your fourth house as well, to kind of back up from January to May, 2022, um, this could also be a time, Sag, where maybe you're focused on expanding your home in some way or moving into a bigger place or where you're wanting to, like if you own a home where you're maybe wanting to like remodel or add a room, or something like that, like you're definitely feeling a lot more hopeful and optimistic in terms of your home and family and you're wanting to expand or grow that in some way. Anyway, so that's something I wanted to add. Like I said, uh, from October to December 20th, Jupiter will move back into your fourth house in Pisces. So there will be like a wrapping up of whatever was started the first five months of the year with Jupiter and Pisces at the very end of the year. Um, and so there will be kind of like a reflection or wrapping up of home and family endeavors uh, those last couple months of the year. And then Jupiter will move back into Aries on December 20th. So like the last like week and a half of the year, uh, Jupiter will move back into Aries and there will be um, the focus will shift again to more like playful, fun, entertainment, joy. Uh, kind of things. So other than that, we also have Mars retrograding in the sign of Gemini, which is your opposite sign the last few months of the year. So from October 30th until the very end of the year, Mars will be retrograding in Gemini. So this is going to be a pretty big time for relationships for you, Sag, these last few months. With Mars retrograding in Gemini, there could be kind of like a rethinking going on of certain relationships or relationship dynamics or, uh, you know, thoughts in relationships, or there could be your relationship itself, whoever you're with could be having kind of like a rethinking, retracing, backtracking, um, energy going on with them, like reflecting on things or redoing something in their lives in some way. But either way with Mars retrograde in your seventh, uh, there's, there's definitely, some kind of backtracking there with uh, a significant relationship in your life. Now, this doesn't have to be a bad thing and it's not, doesn't mean like every Sagittarius rising is gonna go through a breakup or something crazy like that. For some, it could be that, you know, but for others, it just may be like your partner is rethinking their job or wanting to move 
move back somewhere else, you know, like something like this. Or uh, you could be seeing like old relationships kind of like resurfacing or old relationship dynamics or patterns resurfacing, you know, something like that could be it as well with Mars retrograding in your seventh. You do want to watch out around that time because it could be very easy to get into kind of like petty arguments or conflicts. Their perception may not necessarily be 100% clear around that time um, regarding something that they're doing with Mars and Gemini. So um, do just be aware of that. That's another way that, you know, you could see it uh, play out. So with that all being said, Sag, that is basically what I see for you guys in the upcoming year of more of the bigger, broader kind of transits going on in the year ahead, definitely let me know down below if you could see a lot of these themes coming up for you in the year ahead. And uh, let me know throughout the year as well if I got any of this right. I will link my last year ahead horoscope for 2021 down below if you'd like to view that because there are going to still be some similar themes repeating from la this past year as well. So anyways, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching, Sag. I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up Capricorn? Welcome to your 2022 year ahead horoscope. Let's go ahead and get into it. This is for more of the bigger, broader transits happening in the year of 2022, but there are also other important transits that are more easily talked about on a month to month basis. So do definitely make sure that you are subscribed with your notifications on so you can keep up with the more monthly, with your monthly horoscope that I do every month. And with that being said, this is going to resonate more if you're a Capricorn rising because that is how I am reading the chart, the rising sign in Capricorn. So do keep that in mind. And with that being said, let's get into it. So Capricorn, uh, let's start off with your ruling planet Saturn. So Saturn is an Aquarius and has been an Aquarius all year of 2021 and will still be an Aquarius um, all year of 2022. Aquarius is your second house. So there's been a large focus on money and finances, resources, security, stability, etc. you know, priorities and really that which is close to you that supports you and supports the lifestyle that you want to have. Saturn, your second house has been really saying, hey, it's time to be more responsible in terms of income, assets, finances, resources, etc. It's time to progress in this area. It is time to be a little bit more maybe scientific or logical about these areas. That could have been a really large focus for you in 2021 and that will continue in 2022 as well. There's also been a large theme with Saturn squaring Uranus in your fifth house, which will dissipate some in 2022, but we will still have themes around Saturn Uranus and they will come almost close again in October 2022. So Uranus fifth house themes will still be there of wanting liberation in terms of financial freedom or in terms of certain financial systems and uh, wanting to be able to enjoy yourself, wanting to be able to find pleasure and uh, enjoy yourself materially in a physical way with Uranus in your fifth in Taurus. It's possibly also brought up a lot of either random or unstable situations regarding dating or sex, wanting to do something more that you enjoy, like that you enjoy, not wanting to do things that you don't enjoy. You know, if you're grinding too hard and you're not enjoying it, that can get old. And then if you are not grinding enough, but you're trying to enjoy yourself, but you're not grinding enough so you can't, that can get old, you know? And so there's been kind of like this back and forth between finances and joy, basically. <laughs> That's gonna somewhat continue throughout 2022 as well. But what is going to be different? Well, Jupiter is moving out of your second house of finances and money and moving into your third house of a lot of different random shit, basically a communication, your day-to-day -day environment and errands that you run, your city, your town, your day-to-day -day kind of routines, people, places, and things that you see, talk to, communicate with, rel relatives, siblings, short travels, etc. You could be going on like a lot of short trips in 2022. You could be learning a lot of new things, learning a lot of new skill sets or working on something creative or, you know, doing a lot of speaking, uh, like public speaking for some people, wanting to expand in terms
terms of your environment. Maybe you want more space or maybe you want to live in a different town or a different city or, you know, something like that. Broadcast something creative or get into something creative. But I feel like this is going to be a, a time of really exploring different places, exploring different environments for Capricorn. Kind of honing in on like what is going on right here, right now in your community and your environment and where you live and around you rather than more so focused on what's going on like in the big grand scheme of things you know like you're you're really going to be more honed in on your environment more aware of what's around you in a lot of ways so other than that we have the nodes entering your fifth and eleventh house okay and they've been in your sixth and twelfth house of habits and health and work and routines and self-sabotaging behaviors, escapism, endings, healing, etc. And so those have probably been a lot of themes that you've been seeing come up since May 2020. But now with the nodes moving into your 5th and 11th house, uh, the north node being in your 5th, the south node being in their, your 11th, this is going to be finding what it is that really brings you joy, comfort, security, stability in your life and also having certain connections with other people, networking, etc., to get to where you wanna go in life. There's kind of going to be this back and forth between having these connections and friend groups and social life and how that can sometimes be toxic or pull you into old patterns versus doing something new and uncomfortable when it comes to what it is that you find joy in, what it is that you enjoy, that's something physical, practical, and material, if that makes sense. So basically, with the North Node being in your fifth house, it's gonna be a time where you are learning kind of newer lessons in regards to, I mean, it's not always newer, I guess sometimes it can be old, but in regards to pleasure, security, stability, children, finding pleasure with material and earthly things because you have Taurus in the fifth house, creating some kind of stability or security for your children or having a romantic, stable relationship with someone, things like that. It, it may be a little bit unknown or more uncomfortable for you to do that. And that's where the south node comes in in your 11th house in Scorpio, where there may be kind of like friends and your social life and networking and ambition. So it's like for some Capricorns, they may find it easier to focus on those things like networking, ambitions, and like how to get to where you want to go and the connections you need to make, while others may find it more easier to focus on things that they enjoy that are more material and physical, if that makes sense. And so, but there's going to be kind of like a back and forth between these two nodal placements and finding a balance between the two. And there will be a lesson in like having too much fun or enjoying material things too much or taking it too far or getting too wrapped up in others, what's going on with others, or insecurities regarding others and your ambitions to where you start feeling kind of stuck or trapped. And so those are kind of the two downfalls of both signs that you may notice throughout this transit or that you may have to balance out. And this may more make more sense once you start going through it after mid-January than it does right now, but yeah, so. And we also start off this year with Venus retrograde in your sign, um, Capricorn. Uh, which is a big deal and the mercury will also retrograde back into your sign at the very beginning of the year so we start off the year with a pretty big bang for you you're going to be really like rethinking and reevaluating yourself as a person what you value and respect what's important to you what you want out of life how you see yourself your appearance the vibe that you're giving off and uh, how you show up in the world like all of that is really under a massive reconstruction period the very beginning of the year so we kind of start out the year on where you're like going under this major reconstruction and I think by like by probably like March or April, you're starting to finally sort that out, maybe more so April, um, because then Venus and Mars are gonna come across Saturn after they're done in your sign and Saturn's your chart ruler. So that's also going to affect you to some extent. And I feel like that's gonna be more when you're really implementing the lessons that you learned with the retrogrades in your sign at the beginning of the year. And I think that that's gonna be more so like March, maybe into April when you're implementing those lessons. And then the rest of the year is not gonna be like as focused on you for the most part, like the rest of the more 
more bigger transits throughout the year are a little bit more focused in other areas of your chart. And there definitely is more of a focus on your personal life and what you enjoy, finances, and kind of like the day, your day-to-day -day life, you know, um, those themes are really coming up. Jupiter is gonna be moving into Aries from May to October, 2022, and this is your fourth house sector. I think this is gonna bring up a lot to do with home and family because that's what the fourth house rules. And so this could be a pretty big time where you're maybe wanting to expand in some way with home, family, real estate, your roots, like you're wanting to grow that or find more space with that in some way, shape or form. So you could be really kind of taking the lead around that time or taking certain opportunities around that time to do with home, family, roots, etc. Um, I think that's going to be a pretty large focus for you from May 2022 till October 2022. Then Jupiter will move back into your third house from October to December 20th. Um, 2022, where you will kind of be reflecting on those third house Pisces themes that I've already mentioned again. Um, and then it will move back into Aries on December 20th. And so it will like finish like the last week of the year, basically um, in Aries and start 2023 in Aries again, which will once again be more of a focus on your fourth house of home and family. Other than that though, we will be having the Mars retrograde in Gemini, which is your sixth house uh, the last few months of the year. So from October 30th until the very end of the year, Mars will retrograde in your sixth house of health, work, daily routines, and kind of like day-to-day -day maintenance that you need to do to keep up with your day-to-day -day life, your health, etc. And so those topics could really come up those last couple months of the year where you see more of a focus or a reflecting or a backtracking in those areas in some way. That is basically what I see for you Capricorn for 2022. Definitely let me know down below if you could see a lot of these themes coming up already or if you could just see them happening or let me know throughout the year by the end of next year. I'd really love to know. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And we are going to move on to the next sign. What is up Aquarius? Welcome to your 2022 year ahead horoscope. I hope you guys are doing well. Let's go ahead and get into your year ahead. I'm basically just focusing on the big, broader transits happening in 2022, but there are a lot of other important transits that I will be talking about in my monthly horoscopes on a month to month basis. So make sure that you're subscribed and your notifications are on so you don't miss those monthly horoscopes as well. This will resonate most if you are an Aquarius rising, as I mentioned in the beginning. Let's go ahead and start. So Aquarius, we start off this year with Saturn still in your sign. Saturn will be in your sign all throughout 2022 as well. And I talked a lot about that last year. So if you want to go back and watch last year's horoscope as well for 2021, um, I talked a lot about Saturn being in your sign and went really in depth with that and a lot of the lessons that you would learn, but it's basically a grow the fuck up type of energy. Saturn in your sign is kind of laying down the law, like, okay, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. It can also make you feel a little bit more detached, reserved, not as easily able to kind of relate. You're dealing with a lot more obligations and maybe feeling just a general sense of heaviness a little bit more than usual or a little bit more than others. You can kind of feel like you're, the world is resting on your shoulders at times. It can also feel a little bit restrictive in regards to expressing yourself or starting things. So those are just some general things that you could notice or that you could have been already noticing with Saturn and your sign. If you have your ascendant or any placements from 15 to 29, degrees Aquarius, I would say you're going to be feeling Saturn a little bit more throughout this year. Saturn is moving through the rest of Aquarius uh, for the most part this year. It'll still be in there somewhat in 2023. You're definitely going to be feeling Saturn if you have those Aquarius placements in those middle or later degrees of Aquarius, or at least Saturn. You'll be feeling Saturn building a little bit more if you're in more of the later degrees of Aquarius. So there's that. So Jupiter will be in Pisces at the start of 2022 and it will be in there until May 2022. So from January to May 2022, Jupiter will be in your second house of money, resources, income, assets, finances, priorities, worth. Those types of things may be coming up a lot for you in the first five months where you are wanting to expand in terms of your income, your assets, what it is that you want to bring in, your resources, things like that. So that could be a really good time for you in terms of those financial related themes in the first five months. Then Jupiter will move into Aries from May 2022 until October 2022 until it will retrograde back into Pisces. But 
So from May to October 2022, Jupiter will be in your third house of your kind of immediate environment and surroundings, your day-to-day -day schedules and routines, where you visit on a day-to-day -day basis, your environment, your city, your town, short travels, transportation. It could definitely be a time um, as well because the third house can also deal with communication where you are feeling a little bit more outspoken, more optimistic where you are wanting to explore a little bit more or dive into more self-exploration topics or methods around that time, where you are wanting to maybe start something or start a business, or maybe you want to start a website or something like that, where you are able to voice your opinion or something along those lines. Those are just like random interpretations, but it could be, you know, it could be quite a, a lot of different things, you know, but either way, um, and it could also be where you are maybe like traveling a little bit more, or taking a lot of short trips, uh, different places, or maybe where you are doing something more physical in your day-to-day -day life or day-to-day -day routine as well. That could be another way that it plays out here. So anyways, and then Jupiter will move back into Pisces uh, from October till December 20th. 2022 where you will be reflecting on those financial themes that you may have started in the first five months of the year so other than that we also start the year with a venus retrograde also a mercury retrograde in january which will the mercury retrograde will be in your sign and the venus retrograde will be in your 12th house so we kind of start off the year on this like weird footing where we are kind of reflecting or retracing or kind of redoing something. The beginning of the year could feel a little bit like you are going backward a little bit or like you are trying to redo something or there are things coming up from the past. It's kind of like a reconstruction period and with the Mercury retrograde kind of starting in your sign, it could be a time where you are really reflecting on who you are and how you show up in the world and how you think about yourself and your appearance, your body, etc. So likely by the end of March, uh, we're gonna have Mars and Venus in your sign and coming up on Saturn. And so this could definitely be a, a major time where you're kind of mending something, I feel like in your life. You are like harmonizing something within yourself or your life. I really feel that for you and kind of implementing it in a serious way with Mars and Venus kind of meeting on Saturn there. So another thing that we have around April is the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, and that's happening in your second house of money, resources, and finances. And I will say to be careful with this. So in April, this is going to happen, and it may be a time where you are feeling a little bit too optimistic, delusional, or too ideal about something that may not turn out how you think it will, or it may not be what it appears. So do keep that in mind, because this is in your house of finances. So if you're, you know, making a big purchase around that time, it may be, there may be something a little deceptive going on. It, for some people, it could not be that big of a deal. For others, it may. But Jupiter, Neptune could bring, it's going to really magnify those Neptune energies of deception, fantasy, uh, things like that, illusion. And so you do just want to be really careful of that around that time. So the other big thing happening in January, mid-January, is that the nodes will be moving into Taurus and Scorpio. And that will be, once it once they move in mid-January, they will be there all year. They don't move out until halfway through 2023. So this is gonna bring a major focus for you, Aquarius, on the fourth and 10th house in your chart. So it's gonna be a time where the south node in Scorpio will be in your 10th and the north node in Taurus will be in your fourth. There's gonna be a massive focus on themes related to career, your public life, your public image, your legacy, where you're going in life, what you wanna do in life, your, your goals, your achievements versus your private life, your home life, your family, what you do behind closed doors. And so these two themes are going to be really, really big for you in 2022. And finding a balance between these two is what is going to be very crucial and very important because it may be very easy to get caught up in the 10th house Scorpio of power and uh, recognition and being out in the world and all of that. But that can come with certain traps and certain toxic things that start making you feel stuck or start making you feel insecure. Whereas if you can heal those things and kind of find a way to be more vulnerable and less secretive or less mysterious or less focused on 
uh, power dynamics in regards to career, public image, achievements, etc., um, then you can actually, you know, do a lot of healing work there and be relieved of a lot of those heavy shadow traits. And then we also have the North Node in your fourth house where there's going to be a certain level of wanting to focus on home, family, roots, foundation, uh, your living situation, your ancestry, etc. Being able to find security, stability, and practicality within those areas of life, but also a way to liberate yourself in those areas of life, a way to kind of rebel against the system and the, in those areas of life to find a sense of security. I could see a lot of Aquarians being kind of pushed to maybe buy land or to kind of like have their own farms or to grow their own food or something like that with Taurus in the fourth. Now that's just one interpretation. There's many ways you could interpret this, but either way, there's a really finding a individual sense of security within home and family and feeling more independent within home and family and more solid within your foundations. That's kind of like back and forth between home life and private life versus career life and public life are going to be really big topics that start coming up for you, especially around eclipse seasons in 2022, which will be from April to May. So from like mid-April to mid-May of 2022. And then also from like the end of October until the end of November 2022. So those time periods are where you're really, really going to see peak moments regarding those themes, but those themes are going to be kind of underlying most of the year in 2022. Well, other than that, uh, Mars will go retrograde in Gemini, and this happens more towards the end of the year, October 30th, and will retrograde all of November and December of 2022. And this will be happening in your fifth house Aquarius. So this is going to be bringing up topics of love, children, romance, fun, sexuality, and basically what you do for joy and pleasure. Overall, Aquarius, I think that this is uh, a year that is really asking you to kind of step it up and be responsible. And I know that already likely happened in, in 2021. And once again, I think you are one of the biggest signs that I have in mind for 2022 that we'll be experiencing the most growth in 2022 as well, but with the south node in your 10th and Saturn still in your first, there's going to be large themes coming up with power and personal power and personal responsibility and personal accountability. And it can be very easy possibly to get swept away in the negativity of it all or the toxicity of it all or um, the unhealthy kind of attachments to certain, you know, ideals of power and of authority and to possibly engage in unhealthy power dynamics to get to where you want to go. But that will not fulfill you at the end of the day if you are not doing it with the right intentions and for the right reasons. So do keep that in mind. There's definitely a lot of growth that can be had when it comes to your priorities and what it is that is actually valuable to you but you may feel like you have to do the wrong things to get there and that's what i would say to watch out for in 2022 anyways aquarius um thank you guys so so much for watching definitely let me know down below if you feel like you could see a lot of these things happening for you in 2022 or come back and let me know if you do see these things happening i'd really love to hear about it thank you guys again and i will see you guys in my other videos Bye. What's going on Pisces and welcome to your 2022 year ahead horoscope. <laughs> sorry, you guys are my last sign and I'm like, oh my God, thank God. Sorry. This is basically going to be going over your, the big transits happening, the more broader transits in 2022 and how they were, will be affecting your sign throughout the year, the themes that they will bring up for you in the areas of life that will be a focus throughout the year. But do remember that there will also be other really important transits that may not be um, as you know may not impact you for as long of a period of time um, but that we'll be talking about in the month-to-month -month horoscopes for your sign so make sure that you're subscribed and your notifications are on so you won't miss those and also this is going to resonate most for Pisces risings as I said for the beginning because these horoscopes are I'm reading these horoscopes based off your rising being in Pisces. So do keep that in mind. You start off the year with Jupiter in your sign. Your ruling planet is in your sign. I use traditional tropical astrology, so do keep that in mind. But 
Jupiter will be in your sign. And so this is awesome. I feel like this is going to be a major period of growth and healing for you Pisces, uh, especially the first five months of 2022. So from January to May 2022, Jupiter will be in your sign in your first house. And it's going to be a major time of really growing as a person during that time and expanding your awareness of who you are and how you think about yourself, your body, your appearance, all of these things. It could be a time where you are learning new things about yourself or where you are just feeling more empowered or more optimistic, where your view of yourself is more positive or more uh, benevolent in some way, shape or form, where you are maybe even feeling more generous, more giving, um, and just overall feeling more hopeful, more like, like you just have more faith in yourself and your life and your ability to get through things. Kind of watch out for that energy for the first five months. Um, after that, Jupiter will move into Aries in May 2022 until October 2022. From that time frame, from May to October of this coming year with Jupiter in your second, that is going to be a time of more of an expansion or an increase regarding your money, your finances, your resources, your priorities, what you put value and worth into, what's important to you, and really what helps you support yourself and your lifestyle. And so with Jupiter moving through your second house, those are the really big things that are gonna be magnified for you. It could be a time where you start feeling a little bit more independent financially or where you start bringing in more income financially um, or a time where you want to start generating your own income in some way if you don't already uh, with your second house being Aries. But it's definitely gonna be a time where you're taking the lead and you are wanting to grow in, in terms of money, finances, resources, priority and what's of value to you. So that I think is going to be the focus when Jupiter moves into Aries from May to October. And then it will move back into Pisces in October until the end of December. And that will be a time of really reflecting on what you learned with Jupiter in your sign. I will say that April though with Jupiter conjunct Neptune may be a period of time that could be a little bit too much or a little bit delusional. So you do want to watch out for that. Um, that could be a time where maybe you are not seeing things clearly or you're not seeing yourself clearly or where maybe things are getting projected onto you in a really big way. I mean, either way, it's going to deal with you and the way that you see yourself and or what you're projecting to others. And it could be kind of a confusing time with Jupiter on Neptune because Jupiter expands things and Neptune kind of blurs the lines of reality. And so there could be kind of um, a theme of not being able to tell what's real and what's not in some area, like in, in some degree around that time. So do watch out for that around April, 2022. We also start off this year with Saturn in Aquarius and Saturn will still be in Aquarius throughout the whole year as it was basically in 2021 as well. So, and Aquarius is your 12th house Pisces. So you've been getting a lot of 12th house lessons of endings, and self-sabotaging, seclusion, sticking to yourself or being a little bit more isolated than usual in some regards. And with Saturn in your 12th still this year, those themes could be sticking around. And there's gonna be a pretty large focus on those themes in the very beginning of the year, as we will have Mars and Venus moving through Aquarius in, in March. And then also they will conjunct Saturn. And so that could definitely be a time where you are I kind of feel this is a time of harmonizing something from your past or mending something from your past. It could also be a time where you are facing some kind of challenge um, that you've been putting off or facing some kind of challenge in regards to maybe feeling a little bit more secluded or isolated in some way, possibly putting an ending to something or solidifying an ending in some way around that time. There's also going to be an intense theme on and off all year with Uranus still in your third house and transits happening kind of to that on and off all year. Some kind of breakthroughs when it comes to speaking up or your environment or the way that you're perceiving something. And the North Node will be moving into your third house of Taurus as well, which will kind of pull focus towards your day-to-day -day environments, the people, places, and things that you're around. Dealing with shakeups here or dealing with resistance in these areas in some way. And the south node will be in your ninth house of Scorpio. So this is going to be an intense time of really changing 
your beliefs, the way that you see things, your worldviews, your perceptions, the environments and places that you're around, where you kind of visit or where you kind of travel to. I know that's kind of like a lot of weird stuff, but the, the third house rules over a lot of weird stuff. It's kind of difficult to explain, but it's our day-to-day -day interactions in places that we frequent. And so with the North Node here and the South Node in Scorpio, you're gonna be learning a lot. Um, these two houses are the sign or the places of learning, traveling, basically how we view and see things, our ideals, our, our ideologies. Um, you could be getting into some really taboo, different ideologies with the South Node in Scorpio and, and your ninth house. With the North Node in Taurus uh, and your third house, there could be also like a sense of making sure that you're in a secure and stable environment. You know, things have been kind of shaky over the last couple years, right? And so this could be a time where maybe you're really starting to worry more about like being in a secure and stable place or having land or being on more land or something like that could be the case for some people. That's how it could play out. Not saying it will play out for like that for everybody, just giving a couple examples. There's gonna be a general theme of like wanting to get away from the chaos of you know, other people's opinions and ideologies and beliefs and power dynamics with those things and corruption with those things and wanting to get to a place where you feel more freedom, where you feel like you have more individuality and where you feel like you have more of a sense of security. So for that reason, I could see a lot of Pisces risings kind of reconsidering the area that they live in or the area that they want to be in, um, in a lot of ways. Wanting an environment that is safer or more secure or nicer or that has everything that they need for security. And security is already going to be, I think, a big focus for you as well with Jupiter in Aries from May till October uh, of this year. So you're really gonna see these Taurus Scorpio themes coming up though of information and education and environments and places, people, things really coming up here during the eclipse seasons this year, which will be from the middle of April till the middle of May, 2022. And then also from the end of October until the end of November, 2022. That will be when the eclipses happen and those time periods, you will notice more of those Taurus Scorpio themes coming up. This could also be a time with the South Node in Scorpio Pisces where you're very attached to fear-based ideologies or ideologies that are coming from a place of lack or insecurity, self-destructive ideologies or ideas or beliefs, and where you're kind of like moving to a place of more independence with how you think and how that affects your day-to-day -day life on like a basic level. So that's something else that you can notice coming up. Like how are these fears about what's happening in the world or like world events, because that's what the ninth house rules, of possibly affecting you on a more day-to-day -day level and in the things that you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So that could also be something else that another way that this plays out as well. So at the very end of the year, Mars will go retrograde in Gemini. And this is your fourth house for Pisces risings of home, family, your roots, your foundation. Um, and so Mars retrograding here these last couple months, so October 30th, and then all of the month of November and December, Mars will be retrograde. So this could be a time where you are kind of rethinking maybe your living situation, your home life, your family life. Maybe you are really wanting to move or really thinking about moving. Some themes like that could come up. Uh, this could also be a time of really facing conflicts or challenges within the family and home life um, as well. That's another way that this could play out. Uh, but those themes are definitely going to be coming up the last couple months of the year. So you definitely want to be on the lookout for that. Anyways, with that being said, Pisces, that is what I am seeing for you for this upcoming year in 2022. Definitely let me know down below if you could see any of these things happening uh, in your life in 2022 as a Pisces rising. I'd love to know. Uh, feel free to also come back uh, throughout the year if you'd like or at the end of the year and let me know if things ended up resonating and uh, yeah I will see you guys in my other videos thank you guys so so much for watching and that is the end of this video